When the spring meet ends, summer success begins. Buy, sell, fresh winners, hot prospects. One night, one chance. Finish strong. Don't miss out. The Keeneland April Selected Horses of Racing Age Sale. Friday, April 26th.
Welcome back to today at Keedland. Scott and Gabby with you. It is a grade one Saturday. It is a grade one Saturday. It is grade one weather. It's a grade one Saturday. Grade one fans out today. Grade one wagers. (laughs) Keep Keep them coming. Grade one cocktails. Grade one food. Grade one attire. You're well decked out here today for this grade one Saturday. It is a great day at Keeneland Racecourse. We're fired up. We're ready to go. The sun is shining. So the folks are going to be packing this place here today as we will see. I and saw have it seen. personally as I was walking in the gate uh, because I was running late. <laughs> she backs it up. Let's uh, take a look at what's coming up today. We've got the grade one Jenny Wiley, speaking of grade one racing. We've got the grade three Giants Causeway. That's race number seven. That is a mad dash on the turf course for those Phillies. And then the grade three Stone Street Lexington, the final Kentucky Derby points race of 2024 because the first Saturday in May is right around the corner. And there are horses in here that are looking for points to get into the Mm -hmm. Derby. Hades being the primary one after his disappointing run in the Florida Derby. We'll talk more about that. First post time, 1 o'clock Eastern time. So three graded stakes races today. The We'll get to the turf and main track conditions in a moment, but let's take a look back at Friday's action. It was rainy throughout most of the afternoon. It was cool. You had an off track in which these horses were competing over, and Pyrenees, the clocker pick and Keeneland grad, delivered in race number three yesterday here at Keeneland, putting together a strong effort for Cherie DeVoe and her team. Yeah, daughter of Into Mischief absolutely loved the track conditions yesterday. Hot Beach came back in a big way in the FanDuel Limestone, was taken off the turf, run on the main track. This Philly drew into the race and she was very impressive the one impressive thing about her performance yesterday was her gate break she broke links in front of the field how about brad cox for judmont farm at six seven to one on sun coast alex axel concepcion in the saddle this turned out to be a heck of a payoff given the connections behind the winner of race number eight and i think the performance of the meet so far is master of the seas i would agree with that makers mark mile the way he settled, the way that he exploded home, this was, as I said yesterday, right after this race, this is one of those races that we will look back upon when we remember Maker's Mark Mile day once we come mm-hmm. across a, a best performances that we have seen. That was breathtaking, the way that he accelerated in that mile journey. It was breathtaking. Naval Power, Charlie Appleby's other horse, ran incredibly well with a horrible gate break, too, and it's... It's great to hear Charlie Appleby say that he's going to stay in the United States and lead up for another defending title in the Breeders' Cup Mile. Both of them. Both, Both of them, them staying yep. here. Both geldings, so they're going to There's a lot of these. money money to be made on the turf here that in the is, States. That is the truth. The trainer standings, jockey standings, Tyler Gaffleone, he's one clear of the Ortiz brothers, Junior Alvarado and uh, Johnny Velasquez round out the top five. Wesley Ward, he's two in front of Brad Cox. Bill Mott's got three. Cherie's got three. Cherie DeVoe and Kenny McPeak with three wins. So jockey trainer standings as it stands coming into this Saturday, April 13th. Let's go to WKYT for this gorgeous Saturday weather. Your Keelan forecast is going to look great as we track some sunshiny skies. Right now, what you can expect as you head out to the races is definitely great temperatures warming up towards the mid to upper 60s by parts of the afternoon and loads of sunshine for your Saturday ahead. Enjoy your meet. It's going to be perfect. Bottom line, enjoy it. And we know that you will because we will, along with the great racing today here at Keeneland. John Deere track conditions, main track good, turf listed as good to start the day. Something that could certainly change over the course of the afternoon with the sun and the wind that that comes through the area. Yep. And just generally speaking, both surfaces tend to dry out really quickly. So keep that in the back of your mind, especially considering the Jenny Wiley, obviously, in the latter half of the card. Full card selections for Gabby and myself. Download the Keeneland Race Day app. How many winners did you have in a row yesterday? Five winners. The first five winners of the card and then the last winner. Six winners. Six winners yesterday. I mean, it's nothing to write home about. They're all heavy favorites, you like can, four to five. You can only pick what they put in front of you, Gabby got at. Yep. You're right about that. It was a good day. Hopefully we can... Use that momentum to today, although I thought the early pick five, pick four sequence was so hard. I have one strong opinion in the fifth race, which we'll get to, and that's how I kind of build my day. Spala day. Spala day. 
I guess Late after Saratoga? Is that what that is? I would imagine yeah. so. That, that sounds like a, a good spa today. Um, and the late pick five is, is is a good sequence as well. Social media, give us a follow on X at Keeneland Racing, uh, at Keeneland on Facebook, same on Instagram at Keeneland, at Fandle TV. Give Fandle TV a follow on X, and more importantly, download Fandle TV Plus right now. Oh, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and you'll have Fandle TV each and every day or anytime you want, and especially with our racing coverage over there here at Keeneland on FanDuel TV+. Plus. That is Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, your connected TV device. Let's get into the grade one of the afternoon, the grade one Jenny Wiley. A mile and a 16th, the distance for these Phillies and Mares, four and up. Field remains intact, full field of 10. And Gina Romantica, she is a Philly that they thought would be a dirt horse. But then they moved her over to turf. And boy, how things changed for this now five-year-old daughter of Into Mischief. She was a million-dollar Keeneland yearling, Keeneland September yearling back in 2020. Mm -hmm. And she's turned out to be a two-time grade one winner here at Keeneland Racecourse. She won the QE2 at the age of three. She won the first lady at the age of four last year and now looking to pick up another grade one today. Much like yesterday when we talked about the Maker's Mark Mile, and I had Master of the Sea second. They're the they were the horse to beat. Yeah. They're always going to be the horse to beat. This is the mare to beat here today in the Jenny Wiley. But I'm going to think a little outside the box okay. with a mare that we saw blow the doors off of a field in the Cardinal Handicap at Churchill Downs in her U.S. debut. That is Star Fortress. Now, the follow-up race in the Pegasus World Cup turf, uh, female Philly Mare Turf Invitational got into some trouble. Last time out of Tampa Bay Downs, we're going to roll the tape for you in the Grade 2 Hillsboro. She's on the backstretch. You can see she's tugging along. She's wanting to go. The fractions top right of your screen, they are crawling at this mile and an eighth distance. She does not want to go this slow. And as they turn for home... She accelerates. She lays it down, but I think that that aggressive nature down the backstretch ended up caught it, catching up with her. The pace will be faster today. I think she'll relax off of that pace, and we'll see a better effort here today. I, this is a mare that Cherie DeVoe has thought highly of since she arrived uh, here in the United States. Um, even prior to the race at Churchill Downs, in which she won by 10 lengths in that grade three at 6-1, to one, they had high hopes for her. They were trying to race her over at Keeneland. Things didn't quite work out. That was plan B. Plan B worked out, picking up a grade three mm -hmm. win. But I think Star Fortress is ready for prime time here today because the pace is going to be faster. There is no way they go as slow as they did last time out. And I think she relaxes off that pace and shows more acceleration. And Gina Romantica speaks for herself. But watch out for surge capacity. It, it's just the thing about Chad Brown and these Phillies, He's got those that they, they're the, the ones, right? And they continue on. And, and names are escaping me right, right now as far as the Phillies that he's brought here to Keeneland and one mm -hmm. grade ones. But there's always that next generation, that next wave coming. And this Philly could easily be that. She picked up a grade one in the Matriarch. And I think that she may be upgraded because of the turf conditions here today. She went on yielding and good ground at Saratoga. Watch out for surge capacity for the Klarovich Stables. Yeah, I mean, Chad Brown, he's looking for his sixth win in this race alone. That just shows his dominance of this race and he sends out what four horses in this field to try to get the job done so you know he's coming with a multi-pronged an approach army. and a total army here but I, I love Gina Romantica I've been a big fan of this filly from day one and she clearly has turned out to be a really really useful turf horse multiple grade one winner she absolutely loves keeneland we'll take a look at her win two starts back in the grade one first lady here in the fall at keeneland she went against the likes of an italian who is no slouch and yeah, an that's italian one of them, right? that's yeah one of the Chad it, Brown horses. she got an italian got a great trip she was on the lead uh decent fractions for that race and she absolutely ran her down and obviously you could see that she and an italian they were lengths clear from the rest of the field and that just shows the class that Gina Romantica has. I don't have any issues with her coming off the layoff. I think she should be primed and ready to go. She was one of those types of fillies last year that looked like she was getting even better in the latter half of her four-year-old season. And we see that happen, I think, especially with fillies. Sometimes they can go into a whole different stratosphere as five-year-old mares. That's sometimes when they really peak. And I kind of feel like, given the way she ran last year, that's the tra trajectory that she is on. So she's my top pick. Uh, the five English Rose. 
I do think this is a class test, but she did manage to win the group one uh, at Maidan last time out. And it was pretty easily in the end. She just looks like a, a filly that can handle anything. I mean, she's raced four times. She's won three of those efforts. And they've been at different distances between seven furlongs and a mile and an eighth, different surfaces as well. Obviously, Charlie Appleby, he came to play with uh, Master of the Seas yesterday, Naval Power, and then representation with this Frankel filly in English Rose. And then we find Finally, get to the nine, Didia. I think people will overlook her a little bit in this race because of the presence of Chad Brown. But she is a really, really nice mare for Nacho Correas. Uh, when you look at her record, 15 starts, 10 of them victories. And, you know, maybe people will say maybe she's not the grade one type of caliber. She almost won a grade one. She almost won the grade one New York at a mile and a quarter. She might be a little bit better going longer than a mile and a 16th. I think her sweet spot's probably that mile and a quarter. But... I still think her class, class on the grass, it's the best angle. She's won 10 times in 15 starts. There's yeah. not a lot to knock there. And she's been purchased by Jon Stewart oh, here yeah. in recent days. Now the ownership. Well, she'd be a lovely broodmare, you racing. would have to think, right? But, no question about it. Absolutely. Let's go to Tom Leach for more on today's grade one, Jenny Wiley. Let's start with Didia, ridden by Jose Ortiz, who was aboard her last time when she won the Pegasus World Cup turf. She was closer to the pace that day, and Jose says those were the instructions from trainer Nacho Correas. Philly finished fine. He says she has a great turn of foot, and uh, he thinks there's a lot of upside left and likes how she's training. Last time she had a good trip. She, she broke well and put me there, and she had an impressive turn of foot when I asked her to go. And, uh, you know, I've been working her since, and uh, worked the last two times here, and she's, she's working very well. Did you work on the turf course? I did the other day. She went a little three eights. It was to at a field at the turf course, and I, I worked. How did she handle them? She handled it well. You know, she's, she's a professional. She does everything the right way. We have a dangerous Euro invader here from the Godolphin stable and trainer Charlie Appleby. That is English Rose. She's had two outs this year. And speaking of upside, Appleby says that he thinks there is plenty left in this one. I mean, she's still, I think, we're dealing with a filly who still, is still untapped, really, in her potential. Um, we know she had her first start there in Dubai, finished second to a nice filly of ours that went on to win, uh, or what, where we've taken back to the UK to hopefully, like I say, campaign at uh, a group group one level. Um, so this filly, she then came out and obviously went and won herself at group two level there in Dubai. Um, we're dropping back in trip on Sunday, or sorry, on Saturday, um, for the Jenny Wiley. You know, that will be on the sharper side for her, but she's here to, again, a little bit like some of the other team there, to campaign here for the summer. Uh, and you know, the likes of the Diane and races like that will be her main targets. But uh, very confident, again, with the slower conditions, it's going to bring sort of you know, stamina slightly more into play over that extended mile. And, uh, you know, she's a filly that I think that still we haven't got to the bottom of it yet. One note on English Rose Appleby tells me that she has a family that shows that she should really relish any ground that is less than fur, which it should be here. So that should not be a problem for English Rose, but a tough, tough renewal of the grade one, Jenny Wiley. Great stuff. It is. Because uh, she's obviously not only pointing this grade one, but grade ones during the summer in Saratoga. Watch out, America, <laughs> with the horses that Charlie's bringing over here yep. for now and, and moving on in into the summer in places like New York. Let's move along uh, to race number 10 on the card, our co-feature of the afternoon. And this is the grade three Stone Street Lexington Stakes. Straight three-year-olds, a mile and a 16th, $400,000 on the line. And also important, Kentucky Derby points on the line. The last Derby points race of 2024, as we mentioned, the wine steward. It's a horse that's scratched right before the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and we have not seen him since his runner-up finish behind Locked in the Claiborne Breeders' Futurity at the age of two. It's been over six months since he's raced. That's the main question for the wine steward generally. I mean, just not for myself, but for everybody coming back here into this spot for trainer Mike Maker. I go to the number eight horse in Sino for Brad Cox. He was entered in last week's grade one Toyota Bluegrass, drew wide. They opted to scratch out of there and focus on the Stone Street Lexington. And in this race, the John Battaglia Memorial at Turfway Park on March 4 or March 2nd, he beats Epic Ride. Epic Ride was third in the Toyota Bluegrass, so don't lose track of that. Here's a horse that has gotten better as he's been campaigned. He's improved every step of the way he's bred for dirt he's by nyquist out of a bernardini first dam and 
as you'll you'll get more on this horse in the clock report he's been working in company with a pretty stout horse of brad cox's i go to encino here five to one i wouldn't be shocked if he goes off as the favorite in this race with the questions i think most are going to have with the wine steward on the comeback mm -hmm. the number five horse uh hades blinkers being added he needs to go he, he needs to show up today if, if he's going to get into the Kentucky Derby because he's got 30 points right now and he sits at 24. He needs to win or finish second for, to get into the Kentucky Derby. But Joe Arsenio saying he's been wanting to add blinkers for a while, but it was working so he couldn't make yeah. the move. But he gets blinkers today. And then the outside horse, Lucky Jeremy, who I know you like. I mean, he comes out of a synthetic race. He's going to be better on dirt. He was third behind Stronghold, who won the Santa Anita Derby, and a lot of luck who came out of that race and won the Mind That Bird Derby. This is referencing the Grade 3 Sunland Derby, just mm -hmm. two starts back in February. And I think, you know, when we're focusing on our derby picks eventually, I think people will maybe poo-poo the Santa Anita Derby just because of Stronghold. He won the Sunland Park Derby, but I actually think it's going to turn out to be. California is always very strong every single year, and I think you have to respect it once again this year. So he lost to Stronghold, who would come back to win the Santa Anita Derby, and he set the pace in that race, and it wasn't a slow pace. I like to see horses who can set quick paces and keep on keeping on. I thought it was a great effort, especially considering that he stretched out from the mile to the mile on a 16th for the first time. We'll take a look at the Sunland Park Derby. On top of that, a lot of luck was in that race. He would become a next out winner. So it has been a very productive race in terms of the top two finishers and where they have gone on since then. Uh, Jeff Ruby stakes last time out. I think I can give him the benefit of the doubt. Number one, because he went against endlessly who won by four lengths. He just dominated that group. And at the end of the day, maybe he just did not like the synthetic. I talked to Billy Morey before the race, asking him if he thought he would like the synthetic because this barn has so much experience at Turfway. He's won multiple titles there and he thought he would, but you never know at the end of the day. So I love him with that foundation underneath of him. Getting back to the main track, he should be able to show speed and maybe get the jump on the field. So he's a top pick. Now, with the two, the wine steward, there are two things that are concerning. Number one, the layoff. How do you get a horse fit to go a mile and a 16th off of a layoff since the fall when all of these other horses have starts and foundation underneath of them? Another thing don't, aren't you kind of concerned that he might have some distance limitations? There's a reason why he sprinted in his first three starts and only stretched out to a distance of ground in his final start. And I feel like at that time of year, two-year-olds can get away with it because those other horses haven't quite caught up with them yet. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are getting distance for the first time. It's kind of a little bit of a puzzle. Totally different ball game at this point of the year with three-year-olds. That's the grade three Stone Street Lexington race number 10 on the card. Let's start or go back, I should say, to the start of the stakes portion of this card on this Saturday. It's race number seven, the Giants Causeway. Scratch out Jill Jitterbug. Elm, Tr Elm Drive, excuse me, is, is the seven to two morning line favorite. You've got Roses for Deborah. You've got Bling. You've got Ouvray, who's a filly that I love for Chris Block. Love Reigns for Wesley Ward, who's eight to one on the morning line. This is a very, very difficult race to sort through because there is so many horses in this race that have their credentials. It's that a have, tough one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in this race starts the late pick five, which we'll talk about in a moment. But Roses for Deborah, the eight horse, this mare was one of the best turf sprinters in all of North America last year, male or female. And we go back to her last race against Phillies in the Smart and Fancy at Saratoga. She toys with this group with Irad in the saddle. She draws off and wins by three and a quarter lengths. This marked her fourth consecutive win. She won the caress prior to that. She can handle ground like this. She ran on one of the slowest turf courses that we had to have run on last year in 2023 in Stakes Company in the Turf Monster against the boys and finished third, beaten five lengths, where they went 23 and change in 48 and two. Those are fractions you see in route races, not turf sprints. Yeah. And then last time out, which was five months back, she ran in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint, toughest turf sprint in, in North America. So I think she gets back on track here today. Roses for Deborah start getting wound up for a, a five-year-old campaign in 2024. The number four horse, uh, that's Ouvray. I think she might be better sprinting. That's my take on her. We saw her win at a mile last year. She gutted that out. She started to drift. Don't sleep on this filly. Cutting back to uh, the distance here today with uh, Jareth Loveberry back in the saddle. And then the number two horse, Bling. 
Um, she needs pace. I think that that's what she needs, and she, she'll kick home. But remember last year, Vicki Oliver ran her early in the fall meet mm -hmm. to get her ready for the Valley View because she was tearing the barn down. Yeah. She's going to come in fresh today off the four-month layoff. Watch out for bling in today's Giants Causeway. Yeah, I went to the 11 Elm Drive as the top selection. I think this just shows you how deep this field is, that my top two selections are different from your top two selections. I obviously respected Roses for Deborah in here, <laughs> picking her third. But Elm Drive, she is a very gritty mare. And I know this is six and a half furlongs. I know that down she's the hill. down the hill, and it's a totally different situation here. But my thought process is... She looks like a filly or mare, I should say, that's a little bit better uh, going longer than five and a half furlongs. With this give, What's the distance here? With this okay. give in the ground, okay. you want stamina. Didn't Charlie Appleby say that with naval power yesterday? And it actually turned out considering his finish. Yeah. Um, so I am just kind of handicapping with that in mind when all of these turf sprinters that want to go five furlongs, five and a half furlongs are getting really tired coming down the lane. Here comes Elm, Elm Drive with her closing kick. I also use the 12 Love Reigns. She's coming in off that layoff. Look. Sometimes you just got to blindly pick Wesley Ward because he have he has these horses ready off of these long layoffs. I learned yep. my lesson with Fandom. Fandom comes back. He closes off the pace. He hadn't run since Royal Ascot of last year. Wesley Ward comes to party this time of year at Keeneland. He does come to party. Let's get to our clocker report. Elm Drive will be the first one we focus in on. The Southern California Invader for Phil D'Amato and Little Red Feather Racing. Uh, the West Coast Invader sitting on a pair of sharp works at Keeneland. Grade 1 stakes play. Uh, this filly is. She was grade one placed on dirt in the Clement Hurst last summer at Del Mar, and she won her last start off the layoff, finished in the money in 10 of 16 starts. Um, that is Elm Drive. And then Encino, this is what I was talking about as far as working in company. Encino, my pick in the Stone Street Lexington, He's been work. He worked with Tappet Shoes. Mm -hmm. That's the half brother to Cyberknife from mm -hmm. that mare, Awesome Flower, who actually ran in the Belmont Stakes last year. He was stakes placed at Oaklawn Park as well. So that's the benefit that you have when you've got the barn like Brad Cox is. You you can work good horses with good horses. I remember back talking to Norm. This is kicking it way back with Teppin. Mm -hmm. When they had to find somebody <laughs> fast enough to keep up with Teppin when she was working up, I believe it was up at Saratoga. Yeah. you got fast horses, you need a fast workmate sometimes to, to get a little bit more out of them. It's, it's totally the truth. It's hard to do it when you have a smaller type of organization. <laughs> Let's get to our late pick five ticket. Now, there was a bit of a uh, controversy when it came to this because I wanted to spend like 270 bucks but yeah, Gabby went budget my thought process for on air tickets look we might add to this if we put our wagering dollars at the window but this is the skeleton these are the bones of the late pick five I want the meat though Gabby yeah well you know I think people are watching and you can take your creative interpretation of this late pick five add where you may I think the point of this ticket is our strongest opinion in which we both really think uh, the horse to beat is in the Jenny Wiley yeah, Gina Romantica, Gina Romantica. Yeah. Add in race number seven. I think that that's a fair point. Race number eight, it's a third level allowance race. One, two, and five, the idea there. I like Giant Game, but Transect and Frosted Departure and Brigadier General. Don't sleep on bigger, Brigadier General, in my opinion, in the eighth race. Gina Romantica speaks for herself. We're going Hades and Lucky Jeremy in the Stone Street Lexington. And then in the final race, that, it's another tough race. Don't the, leave out the five. Royal Majesty. Don't nine to two. leave him out. You heard it from me first. She's got some aggression this morning. Um, best angles, race number six. Let's start there. Okay. As we'll move to this best angles segment, musical mischief. Just go from the outside. That's the idea with this Michael McCarthy trainee. She blew the doors off of a group in allowance company at Churchill Downs back in late November, and she was able to win this race by 11 legs. Now, granted, it was an off-the-turf race, but she had won prior to that on dirt. She got grade one placing in the American Oaks at Santa Anita on turf. And then last time out, she, she just was in too tough. Desert Dawn's a really nice filly for Phil D'Amato. There's going to be so much attention on Julia Shining. But Julia mm -hmm. Shining is going to be playing catch-up. And this is a mile and a 16th first wire finish. 
turn her loose on the outside, let her go. She's going to do it, in my opinion. I'm going with Musical Mischief in race number six. I'm just here for the sound effects. All right, let's back to race five. Maiden special weight. Say it with me now. Spala day. Do you like this horse, too? I do. Okay. This is a setup race. Look, this race right this here. This is a setup it. race. Look at the way this Billy ran. She has to circle the entire field. She's about, I don't know, eight wide at this point under Tyler Gaffleone. You can see her in the Peter Brandt silks. And then she really starts to kick it into gear. I can't overemphasize how hard it is to close on the turf at Gulfstream Park. And even if you do close, you're not going to close from last, the position that this filly was in. I think it was a useful first race. There's like some crazy stat that Larry Colmas always likes to throw out there with Chad Brown, first time starters at Gulfstream Park. I, this is why he gets them. He maybe gives them a race there at Gulfstream and he wins in Kentucky uh, or New York. And I think that's going to be the, the case with this filly. Quickly, a stat. Made in special weight turf routes at Keeneland. Chad is 5 for 13. 38%. That does. Is that right? Third grade? Yeah. Yep. I think that. And it is a positive that, ROI of $3.38. 5 for 13, maiden special weight turf route. 70% in the money. He just does really well with this type of profile. So, Spala Day, she's going to be my single in the early pick five. What about maiden special weight turf routes on Saturdays, though? Can you mm, narrow it down to Saturdays? I don't think I can do that. Sorry. Let's go to Tom Leach for his long shot pick of the day. For the long shot pick on this card today, I went to the second race in the five horse, Sassy Walker. The main thing is this horse was clean two starts back, showed big improvement last time. Jose Ortiz riding great in the saddle on this one. Not sure if Sassy Walker will be good enough to win, but at 10 to 1, I think this is a definite live shot to hit the board and maybe get home first. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Scott. Thank you most of all for joining us on this Saturday. Enjoy a brilliant race day at Keeneland Racecourse. Weather's perfect, and the racing's even better. Where success begins. Buy, sell, fresh winners, hot prospects. One night, one chance. Finish strong. Don't miss out. The Keeneland April Selected Horses of Racing Age Sale. Friday, April 26th. Did you know Toyota actually spends a million dollars every hour of every day on R&D? That's in addition to a $39 billion investment to design and build vehicles in the USA. Made in America means something to Toyota, like over 170,000 jobs and over 32 million Toyotas built right here in the USA. And for over 20 years, Toyota's electrified vehicles have led the way to a better tomorrow. The more you know, the more you'll drive Toyota. Let's go places. Lady Aurelia down the center in the white and green colors is going away at the end. Rachel's Valentina Ratner and takes the lead. Keeneland, a horse will always be measured in hands. Hands that see, that sense, that speak. Hands that hold our sport to a higher standard. Not for our sake, but for theirs. For the love of the horse. For generations to come.
Keeneland welcomes the Acousticats to the paddock. The Acousticats are a select a cappella ensemble of 12 voices from the University of Kentucky Men's Chorus. They perform numerous concerts for university and community functions, as well as every men's chorus concert. Specializing in pop a cappella, they have recorded two albums and are one of the university's most visible ensembles. Today, the Acousticats will first present our state song, My Old Kentucky Home. The sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the people are gay. The corn tops ripe and the meadows in the bloom, while the birds make music all the Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as you are able for our national anthem. <clears throat> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the past Keeneland is proud to recognize Brian Scott from security as the employee of the day. Congratulations, Brian.
Good afternoon. Welcome to Keeneland Racecourse, where the main track is fast, the turf listed good, the rail at zero feet on the turf course today. Time now for a look at the program changes beginning in the first race, where the first of the day's rolling doubles and rolling pick threes get underway. It's also the start of the early pick five. In the opener today, scratch number six, Bainbridge Dancer. Again, scratch number six, Bainbridge Dancer. A number of jockey changes in the first race. On number four, Iguazu, it'll be Albin Jimenez. Number four, Iguazu, make the jockey Albin Jimenez. Jockey change on the eight, Fancy Prance, it'll be Javier Padron Barsanis. Number eight, Fancy Prance, the jockey Javier Padron Barsanis. And there's a jockey change on the 11, Let's Go Brandy, and that'll be Joe Rocco Jr., 11, let's go Brandy, make the jockey Joe Rocco Jr. A couple of other changes in that first race. There's an overweight, number one, Gloriette, the jockey, one pound over. That's number one, Gloriette, the jockey, one pound over. And please note, the seven get by wears a left front bar shoe. Equipment for the seven get by, left front bar shoe. Race two, start of the early pick four. In that second race, scratch the one, Melania, and scratch number eight, Birdie Rose. Again, scratch number one, Melania. And scratch number eight, Birdie Rose. Third race. Scratch the one, Modern Day Warrior. Scratch the seven, True Faith. And scratch number eight, Air It Out. That's in the third race. Scratch the one, Modern Day Warrior. Scratch the seven, True Faith. And scratch number eight, air it out. Fourth race includes not only a double and a pick three, but another pick four begins in that fourth event. In race four, scratch the seven, Baxter. That's in the fourth race, scratch number seven, Baxter. Please note there's a jockey change on the one, Brody, and that'll be Gabriel Lagunas. Number one, Brody. The jockey has been changed to Gabriel Lagunas. Race 5, take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. That's race 5, take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. Sixth race, start of the pick 6, no carryover. In that sixth race, scratch number 3, joke CC. That's in the sixth race, scratch number 3, joke CC. Seventh race, start of the late pick five. It's also the start of the Keeneland turf pick three, made up of races seven, nine, and 11. In that seventh race, scratch number three, Jill Jitterbug. Scratch number three, Jill Jitterbug. Please note number 13, high class, draws into the race. 13, high class, will run. The jockey will be Brian Hernandez, Jr. That means there's a jockey change on the seven, Port Townsend. The jockey is Florent Giroux. That's number seven. Port Townsend. Jockey, Florent Giroux. Eighth race, start of the late pick four. Scratch part of entry, 1A, Howling Time. And scratch the six, Gilcrease. That's in the eighth race. Scratch part of entry, 1A, Howling Time. And scratch number six, Gilcrease. Ninth race. No changes in the grade one, Jenny Wiley. Race 10, the Stone Street Lexington. Scratch number seven, ever do it. Race 10, the Stone Street Lexington. Scratch number seven, ever do it. 11th and final race, no carryover for the Toyota Super High Five. Scratch number two, Copper Missile. Also scratch the 14, Thomas Aquinas. The 15, One Red Scent. And the 16, Tafari. That's in the 11th and final race. Scratch the two, Copper Missile. Also scratch 14, Thomas Aquinas. 15, One Red Scent. And 16, Tafari. Please note... 
Number 13, Breakout, draws into the race. Number 13, Breakout, will run. Those are the current program changes. Time now to check in with Scott Hazelton and Gabby Gaudette. Happy Saturday to you, Kurt Becker. And for those of you joining us here at this beautiful Saturday afternoon at Keeneland Racecourse, what a difference a day makes. This is going to be a jam-packed day, Gabby. And we have wonderful racing as well on this Saturday. Lots of fans and patrons coming out to Keeneland Racecourse as well. They've probably been cooped up in the house for the past three days with all of the rain, but the sun is out. It could have been a more beautiful day. And what a card we have in store for us to today as well. We are raring to go. Three stakes races today. First of those three stakes races is race number seven, the Great Three Giants Causeway. That is a very tough turf sprint. The grade one, Jenny Wiley, is race number nine. And then the Stone Street Lexington is race number 10, our grade three. But the grade one, Jenny Riley, is a filly, ha features a filly by the name of Gina Romantica, who is looking for her third grade one win here at Keeneland Racecourse. That is rare air that she's trying to achieve. She loves Keeneland, and she comes back here. She obviously, her last grade one win was actually right here at Keeneland in the grade one first lady. She did take on foes in the Breeders' Cup mile and she returns for the first time since that event she loves keeneland chad brown her trainer i believe he's looking for his sixth win in this race she was a grade one winner multiple times over and even prior to that a million dollar keeneland september sale graduate gina romantica our highlight as far as the jenny wiley but it is not an easy race it is a grade one for a reason enjoy this gorgeous saturday here at keeneland race course Seventeen minutes away from the opener as the main track now listed as fast. Make note of that. Main track is fast here at Keeneland Racecourse. Let's go, Brandy. The eleven horses, four to one. My top selection, Gabby's top selection here in the opener for Eric Heitzman, a Philly by Cloud Computing, who ran second on debut. She hopped at the start. She still was able to establish a good position in that sprint, going six furlongs at fairgrounds, and she'll be going five and a half here today. I think she's going to go from the outside post. And I think she's got a big opportunity to spring a very mild upset if she holds it four to one, which I would expect will be about the region that we get as far as the price is concerned on Let's Go Brandy. I like this Philly. Gabby likes this Philly. And you got to like the price on this cloud computing Philly. Joe Rocco Jr., that is the rider now, rider change on Let's Go Brandy, as Kurt Becker just announced. The number three horse. That is Missile for Eddie Keneally. She's the two to one favorite right now for Eddie Keneally and Joseph Sutton. Luis Saez gets the opportunity to ride this Bolt Doro Philly. She dropped in for 20 last time out and ran, ran one of her better races to date. This is a Philly we saw a year ago debuted here at Keeneland at the age of two, finishing fourth. Then she just could not hang in those maiden special weight races at Churchill and Fairgrounds. And they got a response from her dropping in for 20 last time out. At least I like to see that when you're dealing with a horse that is coming back at a particular level who's already taken that drop. That or you try to catch them right off the bat when they're dropping in for that tag for the first time. Many tried to. She was the favorite that day. But all things considered, she did not run poorly, finishing second, beating just three quarters of a length. She's a legit favorite in here at odds of two to one. And then the rail filly, that is Gloriette for Ben Colebrook. Uh, she was debuted here at Keeneland last year. As a two-year-old, she ran into You Almost Had Me, who's turned into a multiple stakes winner. She ran against Vivi's Dream, a talented filly for Kenny McPeak. So she's kept very stout company, and this falls under the category of trying to catch a horse dropping in to a certain level for the first time in their career. This is the first time that she'll run in a maiden claiming event. It's often categorized, and I think rightfully so, as the biggest drop in class in racing. When you go from maiden special weight company in for the maiden tag, and I understand there are different levels of maiden claimers from 20 to 50 to 100, 150,000 at times, but anytime you take that drop, it's a substantial drop down in competition, and that's exactly what Ben Colebrook is doing with Gloriette, this Munnings filly here today as she sits at three to one and she gets back on dirt where she might be better than what we saw from her on the synthetic at Turfway this past winter. The pick five pool 
get this, over $307,000. That is with 15 minutes to post. We are going to have big pulls on this Sunday afternoon at Keeneland Racecourse. We urge you to get involved, and don't forget about the daily doubles here today that roll throughout the entire race card and that reduction in takeout from 22% down to 15%. In layman's terms, more money being pay paid out in those daily doubles. So get involved in the doubles, the pick fives, the pick fours. A lot of wagering opportunities today here at Keeneland, including the $3 Keeneland Turf Pick 3 as we're on the turf course for all of the turf racing as the turf is listed as good. Enjoy a gorgeous day here at Keeneland. The racing gets underway in less than 14 minutes.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's first race, maiden claiming race, fillies and mares age three and up, for a price of $20,000. Five and a half furlongs over the main track listed fast. Double and pick three wagering started the early pick five. Main track fast turf good today. In the opener, scratch the six, Bainbridge Dancer, six, Bainbridge Dancer scratched. A reminder, the jockey for the four, Iguazu, is Albin Jimenez. The jockey for the eight, Fancy Prance, will be Javier Padron Barsenas. And the jockey for the 11, let's go Brandy, Joe Rocco Jr. Overweight, the one Gloriette, jockey one pound over. Equipment for the seven, get by, left front bar shoe. Post time, seven minutes. I like this Phillies race on paper, and I like her even more getting a chance to see her. That is Let's Go Brandy. She's now down to 3-1 to one for Eric Heitzman. A well-turned-out Philly, dappled as much as any of these horses in this race. 3-1 to one on the board. Let's see if she can get turned loose from the outside draw. I think she's in a perfect situation, a perfect group, in order to break her maiden in start two of her career with Joe Rocco Jr. aboard. 3-1, to one, I'll take it all day here in the opener with coming up in less than five minutes' time. And one of the long shots in here that I was drawn to, the first-time starter, Glamorous. Not a bad-looking daughter of Palace Malice out of that first damn marvelous daughter of Pioneer of the Nile. She's a half-sister to a couple of winners. Obviously, a late start to her career. You typically don't see many horses, not saying it doesn't happen a lot, but it doesn't happen often where horses are debuted at the age of four. But nonetheless, here she is for trainer Israel Ace Savito and owner Julie Knott. Andres Calleja referred to that big upset that he pulled on Sunday in that two-year-old race. He will ride hard, we know it, but she is not a bad-looking filly. Glamorous, the number 12 at 28-1 to 1 for what it's worth. The pick five pull is worth getting involved. It is $434,000. We'll be talking about a half a million plus pool once the late money comes in. And there is still five minutes till post time for the first of 11 races on this gorgeous Saturday at Keeneland Racecourse. Best of luck.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's first race, start of the early pick five. Moving into line for the first. Stuck on you comes forward along with Andrea Beach. Let's go, Brandy moves into line. Glamorous. Last to load goes in at the post. And they're off. There goes Gloriette right out for the lead. Stuck on you and let's go Brandy there from the far outside. Get by is away running in fourth vacation fifth. Missile between horses down toward the inside in the sixth position. Fancy Prance moves up from seventh. Igwazoo is eighth onto the far turn. Glamorous will be wide near the back of the pack in ninth. Followed by Andrea Beach who's back toward the inside in tenth. And Mikey's Magic Gal last of the 11. 22.2 seconds was the time for the opening quarter. It is Gloriette who leads, and Gloriette leads it by two legs. Stuck on you is second as they come toward the quarter pole. Missile tries to move up toward the inside, tries to get engaged here, is still third, now taking second. And then Let's Go Brandy is fourth behind that one. They've got to catch Gloriette, who's opened up on a six-length lead, coming to the eighth pole. Gloriette by seven. Let's Go Brandy to the outside is challenging Missile for the second spot. Stuck on you has lost ground, drops back to fourth, 16th pole. Gloriette, Luan Machado, the race is over. Gloriette has won it. The battle does continue for second. Let's go. Brandy gets up to the outside and takes that second spot on the line from Missile, who is home third. Going to be close for fourth, either Andrea Beach or Mikey's Magic Gal for fourth. Gloriette and Luan Machado throwing the haymaker right out of the gate. She broke like a shot and she just kept on going. A easy win at six to five for Ben Colbrook and Michael and Catherine Ball, daughter of Munnings, goes off as the favorite. The real race was for second and the 11 is able to win that battle. That is Let's Go Brandy over the number three horse missile. One eleven three as a favorite scores in the opener here at Keeneland.
On official results of Keeneland's first race, number one, Glory at first. Number 11, Let's Go Brandy second. Number three, Missile third. And number five, Andrea Beach fourth. One eleven three five, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's first race, number one, Gloriette. The winner owned and bred in Kentucky by Michael and Catherine Ball. The trainer, Ben Colebrook. Luan Machado is the winning jockey. Gloriette, three-year-old filly by Munnings. Out of Julerette by Successful Appeal. Bred in Kentucky by the Ball family. Six, or rather, five and a half furlongs. One minute, 4.74 seconds. Results are now official for that first race. One eleven three five. The official results. Keeneland's second race upcoming, doubled in pick three, wagering start of the early pick four. Scratch the one, Melania, and also scratch number eight, Birdie Rose. Main track is fast, turf listed good.
Race number two, eighty thousand dollar claiming event. Non mortars of two lifetimes, seven furlongs will be the distance, and scratch the number one and eight, yeah. so down to a field of six. Bill Morey's got Rosie Bay, the number two horse, who I think can show some speed from the inside. Obviously, that worked out in the opener. This is a different class of racing that we saw in the opener, as these are mares that have won a race and are competing at a higher claiming price, $80,000. But she gets off this synthetic track at Turfway Park. Bill Morey, he runs a lot of horses up at Turfway during the winter months and will bring plenty down here to compete on the dirt course. Nine to one with Corrales in the saddle, who I think will be aggressive from the inside draw. I think that that is a phenomenal price, clearly, on a filly that makes sense in and amongst this group here this afternoon. The number five horse is touting herself down here in the paddock. That is Sassy Walker. Uh, she's on her toes right now as she walks around and full of energy with two handlers with her. But uh, she is a filly that came through with a win last time out for Maiden 50. First off the claim for Jesus Esquivel and T and E Racing. And they gave her a little bit of time off from that uh, claiming event to ready for that race at the end of March, about a month and a half. And she really did respond on the synthetic. She looks gorgeous down here watching her parade around the paddock in fact she just stepped off to the grass here for a moment and i believe that's where they're going to saddle her but uh, jesus esquivel and his team have done a great job with this filly already and looking to keep things going here today she's four to one on the board right now from a 10 to one line so very live on the tote board in the wind mutuals from 10 to one down to four to one with jose ortiz who's having a sensational meet here at keeneland race course and then the number six horse, St. Benedict's Prep for Ben Colbrook, as Ben Colbrook looks to sweep the early daily double along with rider Luan Machado. This is a filly by Flatter who will cut back in distance, and we'll see what she's able to do here today going seven-eighths of a mile, because the last time that she went this distance, she came from off the pace. She did show a little bit more tactical speed in her sprint race at Keeneland in October. That was the day in which these connections, Arapahoe Thoroughbreds, claimed her for $50,000. Uh, she's turned out to be a pretty decent claim since but they're looking for the win here dropping in for 80 obviously she makes sense in a very tough field but good prices throughout this field of six two to one on upwards of 16 to one with less than 19 minutes away from race number two the early pick four begins here that early pick five pool which began in race number one nearly a million dollars in the early pick five that pool settled at nine hundred and fifty eight thousand dollars plus so get involved in these big pools big rewards to come here this afternoon parimutually speaking as we'll keep it rolling through race number two here to start that early pick four 19 minutes to post to Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's second race. Doubled in pick three, wagering start of the early pick four. Scratch number one, Melania. Also scratch number eight, Birdie Rose. $80,000, the claiming price for these fillies and mares, age three and up, seven furlongs over the fast main track. Post time in seven minutes. There's some nice upside to this Philly, the Roan runner, eight to five morning line, five to two right now for Joe Sharp, uh, Liam's map Philly, who cuts back in distance. I think that's the biggest angle with this Philly. She comes out of first level allowance competition, drops into this high level, now more does a two eighty thousand dollar claiming event. But she's shown speed. She's gotten past in those route races as of late, whether it's on turf or the dirt. But the cutback to seven eighths of a mile looks to be a big positive move for this Philly here today. And she's picked her energy up since coming out onto the track five to two on the board Tyler Gaff Leone for again trainer Joe Sharp beaten favorite last time out on turf on dirt today and uh, good price as it stands right now the number five horse Sassy Walker uh, high energy down in the paddock she's gotten focused since coming out onto the track she I like the way that her attitude has changed it's not as though it's dipped off she still has that good energy that she has but when she came out she just was looking around looking at what the task is ahead and I think that she's got a big look in here at odds of nine to two that's Tom Leach's long shot pick of the day Sassy Walker Sassy Philly by Munnings out here looking for back-to-back -back wins for T and E Racing and the Logan family. Good luck. Race number two, less than five minutes to post. The early pick four pool now well over $129,000.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's second race, start of the early pick four. Moving into line race two. Liam's champ comes forward, three left to load. Sassy Walker moves into line. St. Benedict's Prep, Eyes of Gold, the last one. Going in. They are at the post. And they're off. Roja Bay from the inside. And now here's Sassy Walker from the outside. Liam's champ and the Roan runner kicks in. The Roan runner moves up, takes the lead from Sassy Walker toward the far outside. Now Sassy Walker puts a neck in front as they head up the backstretch and continue their battle. Liam's champ is between that pair in third. Roja Bay is fourth down toward the inside. St. Benedict's Prep is fifth up on the outside. Then a gap of three more lengths back to Eyes of Gold, who is last opening quarter 22.31. One seconds. They head for the far turn. The Roan runner is the leader. Leads it by three quarters of a length. Sassy Walker second up on the outside by a length. St. Benedict's Prep swings up to the far outside. Moves up two positions into third. Still two lengths off the lead though. That Liam's champ between horses as they round the far turn. And Roja Bay tries to find running room. Does move up two positions against the rail but still third. Five lengths off the lead as they turn for home. The Roan runner is the leader. St. Benedict's Prep two lengths away and second and a gap of two more. Back to Roja Bay, who's third toward the inside. Liam's champ is in fourth. Coming to the eighth pole, the Roan runner still leads by two and a half, three lengths into the final furlong. St. Benedict's Prep is still trying, still second. Roja Bay third to the inside. Sixteenth pole, a final try from St. Benedict's Prep, and St. Benedict's Prep will not quit. Just keeps moving and gets by St. Benedict's Prep, Luan Machado, to win it. The Roan Runner was home second. Roja Bay was under the wire third, and Liam's Champ was fourth. It's a Colebrook Machado early daily double on this Saturday at Keeneland Racecourse with a 16th of a mile. She was within striking range, but she had some work to do. St. Benedict's prep, but Luan Machado kept after, kept to task as she did, and she's able to wear down the speed of the number three horse who ends up finishing second, the Roan runner. Back in third, the number two horse, that is Rosia Bay, who rallied up to get that third money. But Colebrook rolling today to kick off the double along with Luan Machado. Nine to five, the price on the winner, the number six horse, St. Benedict's Prep.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's second race, number six, St. Benedict's Prep, finished first. Number three, the Roan Runner, second. Number two, Roja Bay, third. Number four, Liam's Champ, fourth. Six, three, two, four, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's second race, number six, St. Benedict's Prep, owned by Arapahoe Thoroughbreds LLC of Dan Issel. Back-to-back -back wins to start the card for the trainer-jockey combination of Ben Colebrook and Luan Machado. St. Benedict's Prep, a four-year-old filly by Flatter, out of line by Warfront, bred in Kentucky by Claiborne Farm. Seven furlongs, one minute, 25.12 seconds. Second race results official. 6324, the official results. Keeneland's third race upcoming, including double and pick three wagering. Scratch number one, Modern Day Warrior. Also scratch the seven, True Faith. And scratch number eight, Air It Out. Main track is fast, turf listed good.
Race number three, less than 19 minutes to post. This third event, a maiden $40,000 claimer. Seven furlongs, the about seven furlongs on the fast main track. And the eight to five favorite is the 12 horse. Summon your courage for T&E Racing and Redeemer Racing, sent out by trainer Will Walden. This is a colt that drops to the easiest competition that he's ever seen. He was acquired out of the Keeneland April sale last year for $70,000. He's had a couple of runs since then and you look at the horses that he's run against over the course of his 11 race career he's run against horses like disarm and most strike and extra and Neho. he was third behind the eventual kentucky derby winner mage in a maiden special weight at gulfstream park and even last time out at oaklawn park Granted, he was seventh beaten 13 lengths. He ran into a horse that looks like has stakes potential on down the line by the name of Ben Franklin. He drops in for 40 today. If he does not respond with a career best effort, they are going to be left trying to figure out what to do with him here today. And I shouldn't say career best effort, but a winning type of effort. It is win now for Summon Your Courage, in my opinion, at eight to five. Given who he's run against, who he's running against here today, dropping in for Maiden 40. He's a legitimate favorite at eight to five. He deserves to be eight to five on the board right now for these connections with Irad Ortiz Jr. taking the call. So we'll see how he fares. Summon your courage drawn to the outside here in race number three. The number full horse, that is Irik Ridge for Alstall Jr. Also dropping down in class. Uh, he's a horse that in his last two races, one race he came from off the pace. Last time out, he was a bit more aggressively spotted going six furlongs. We'll see what they decide to do going seven-eighths of a mile. I would imagine that this is going to be a situation, a play-the-break type of situation for this tonalist Ridgling, but he too dropping in class in a big way here today from the Maiden Special Weight Company at Churchill and Ellis and Fairgrounds. Uh, so the expectations have to be that it will respond. he will get a response of a better effort here this afternoon. And even with that being said, his last few races have not been bad. He's been running against tougher competition, finishing third in each of his last two races. Just seems like a sensible spot at this point in time for this four-year originally that was purchased for 15000 at the Keeneland January sale back in 2021. And then the number six horse, being saddled up, paved in gold for Lance Rutledge. Blinkers come off this gelding. He wore blinkers in his two starts to date between Laurel and Turfway Park. Trainer Lance Rutledge has made this move with a less than a handful of horses taking blinkers off and gotten a win, one for three, with a return on investment of over $8. So can spring an upset in this situation. I don't know that this would be that much of an upset. Clearly, I would lean towards the 12 over the six in here and even the four but paved in gold is a horse that makes sense his only dirt race was the better of the two races we've seen from him between turf or the synthetic the turfway run last time out and the dirt race so with the blinkers coming off gerardo corrales we'll see if he's got a little bit more focus late i would imagine that's the idea for a horse that has some speed and positional speed to be able to see those horses coming to him late in this race not surprised that he's being bet down to five to one right now a son of quality road out of a stakes winning first dam at yahilwa she was quite the runner uh, so so good bloodlines here for this four-year-old gelding paved in gold race number three coming up in less than 15 minutes start of another daily double exacta trifecta pick three as well as the dime superfecta in play here for race number three good luck
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's third race, a maiden claiming race, three-year-olds and up, claiming price $40,000. Beard course, about seven furlongs over the fast main track. Doubled and pick three wagering are featured here. Scratch the one, modern day warrior. Also scratch the seven, true faith. And scratch number eight, air it out. Post time at seven minutes. couple of long shots here to take a look at as they warm up for race number three, the 10 moving to Kentucky, a first time starter for Matthew Sims, a colt by Mark Valeski, who's had 10 workouts at getting back up. He was training back at the Thoroughbred Training Center in the summer. They gave him some time off and then picked back up at the beginning of January. So 10 workouts to get ready for this career debut. It certainly is not an easy maiden 40. What race is here at Keeneland Racecourse? But he is fit and ready to go with those 10 works. And he worked in 48 flat. Alex Achard in the saddle. He's a half brother to a stakes winner and a horse that ran 96 times in his career. Something you don't often see. A horse by the name of Pig, Big Tall Paul, who was a 16 time winner and made nearly three hundred thousand dollars so a sturdy pedigree behind moving to kentucky unreasonable the 11 horse for rusty arnold he took a big step forward last time out it may not look that way on paper go finishing fourth beating nine and a quarter lengths but that was by far the best race we've seen from this colt i wouldn't be surprised if rusty hasn't primed to set Another step forward here today, third off the layoff, always a strong angle. He looks well out there, son of honor code in the Calumet Farm, black and gold silks, 16 to one, un unreasonable. I think worthy of a long shot shout here in race number three. But eight to five on the number 12 horse, summon your courage. As we mentioned, taking that drop down in class and showing some class in his warm up here under Irad Ortiz Jr. Good luck in race number three at Keeneland.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's third race. Moving into line, race three. Moving to Kentucky, moves into line. Here's Irick Ridge moving in. Just a couple of more left to load. Unreasonable comes forward. Summon Your Courage will be the last one. Sir Grayland goes into line. Here's Summon Your Courage now coming forward. Goes in. They're at the post. And they're off. Seca Diabo is off a step slowly. Here comes Beezer out for the lead. Sir Grayland paved in gold in between that pair up close in third in the opening stride. Summon Your Courage moves up to the far outside. Now taking fourth, moving to Kentucky, moves with that one in fifth to the far outside. Then a gap of five more lengths back to Irick Ridge, who is sixth to the inside by just ahead. Unreasonable trout sevens to the outside of that one as they head for the far turn. And then further back, east from west, and Zeka Diabo at the back, 22 0.65 seconds was the time for the opening quarter. Sir Grayland against the rail leads it by a half length. Paved in gold goes second by a length. Now summon your courage is going to be wide around the far turn. Moves in the center of the track is third. Still a length and a half off the lead. Moving to Kentucky is fourth. Hugs the rail around the far turn. Beezer drops back losing ground now as Irick Ridge moves by that one into fifth as they turn for home. Sir Grayland is the leader. Leads it by three legs with a quarter mile to go. Some Summon your courage, trying to find more as they move off the far turn and into the stretch, but is still in second. Irick Ridge takes to the outside from third, coming past the eighth pole. Sir Grayland chased by Summon Your Courage and Irick Ridge. That pair still five lengths away as Sir Grayland strides on by the 16th pole. Irick Ridge goes to second, but Sir Grayland and Ray Gutierrez in front to win it. Irick Ridge was home second. Summon Your Courage was third and moving to Kentucky was up for fourth. The first time starter, Sir Grayland. Well done to Grant Forster and, Ham and his team having him focused and ready for this test here this afternoon with the big crowd and the sun shining. A son of Spicer who showed speed, which has been key on this main track at Keeneland Racecourse over the first week of racing. He dashes away from him at 14 to 1. A big price here in race number three. The four Irick Ridge rallies for second. And the favorite had every opportunity, just flattened out some of your courage, checking in in third. But no doubt about Sir Grayland, ready to roll here on debut, one for one to kick off his career.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's third race, number five, Sir Grayland, was first. Number four, Irick Ridge was second. The 12, Summon Your Courage, third. The 10, Moving to Kentucky, fourth. 5, 4, 12, 10, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's third race, number five, Sir Grayland, owned by James Colwell, Ryan Chanley, and post-time thoroughbreds of Brian Buckle, trained by Grant Forster, Ray Gutierrez, the jockey. Sir Grayland, a three-year-old gelded son of Spitzer, out of Awesome Elvira by Awesome Again, bred in Kentucky by post-time thoroughbred. Speared course, about seven furlongs, one minute, 27.88 seconds. Results are official for Keeneland's third race, 5-4-12-10, the official results. Keeneland's fourth race upcoming. This will start another pick four. Rolling doubles and pick threes also continue. Scratch the seven, Bexter. Scratch the seven, Bexter. Jockey for the one, Brody, Gabriel Lagunas. Gabriel Lagunas rides number one, Brody. Main track is fast. The turf listed good.
Race number four, 18 minutes to post. We've got a mid-card pick four beginning with race number four. So three pick four opportunities here this afternoon on this Saturday card at Keeneland Racecourse. It's a maiden special weight event, straight three-year-olds going six and a half furlongs. The number 10 horse, Red State, is my top selection for Paradise Farm and David Studeker and others. Mike Maker, the conditioner of this City of Light Colt that was purchased last year as a two-year-old in training for $200,000. He's a half-brother to a stakes winner by the name of Jessica Krupnik, so a good family along with that, the very good connections here with Mike Maker leaning on Luis Saez has had some very quick workouts since arriving here at Churchill Downs, or to Kentucky, I should say, working over at Churchill Downs after spending the winter down at Palm Meadows in Florida, just north of Gulfstream Park. Should be ready to roll based on those works. He's had plenty of foundation underneath him with workouts dating back to the 14th of January, leaning on this first-time starter Red State to debut nicely for trainer Mike Maker. He's seven to two on the board right now. The number three horse lose legacy for Hugo Andrade, a Colt by Tapature, who comes out of some tough competition the last two times we saw him on dirt. He spent the winter at Turfway Park, responded with the drop down in competition. Even though he was running against Maiden Special Weight Company, he finished third and second in his last two starts at Turfway on the synthetic. But if you go back to November, he ran into two very, very good horses in Maiden Special Weight Company. In fact, three. You've got in his last dirt race, Track Phantom, who was one of the top three-year-olds down at the fairgrounds for trainer Steve Asmussen. He was also defeated by Latlong uh, in that common race on the 25th of November. He's been better since. Will it be as effective as he's been on the synthetic on the dirt here today it remains to be seen, but you can't ignore the improvement that he has shown, and maybe it's just simply down to the competition that he's not facing, not did not face compared to what he was running against at the end of his two-year-old season. Uh, the three-horse five to one certainly looks live in and amongst this group. And then another first-time starter, the nine-horse, who is the current favorite, that is Shadow Surge for Rapoli Stable and R.A. Hill Stable. Another high purchase price. This, in, in this instance, a yearling. He was purchased for $300,000 at Keeneland September back in 2022. George Weaver with first-time starters, 15%. He's a son of Spitestown going six and a half furlongs today with a violence first dam. So there is some speed pedigree there and sprint pedigree when it comes to the nine. Shadow Surge, our current favorite. Taking a closer look at the 16 idol, this will be my top selection, a colt that has a wonderful pedigree, the Stone Street homebred. He's a three-year-old son of Curlin out of Teen Pauline, who was grade one place and graded stakes winner for Stone Street. Todd Pletcher actually trained her. But this horse has a really nice pedigree, and a pedigree to suggest that he'll improve with experience and with distance. He ran very well first time out, despite having a lot of trouble. Uh, the winner of that race was actually a, a well-meant second-time starter for the full league team, and this horse just obviously caught a lot of traffic troubles down on the inside and couldn't overcome that early trouble. But I anticipate this horse to maybe have a sharper break and be better in his second start today. And he's being bet, Gabby. He's 3-1 to one right now on the board. Teen Idol for Stone Street Stables. Steve Asmussen and Joel Rosario will ride today. Again, race number four, start of a mid-card pick four for the next four races. 50-cent minimum wager. Less than 15 minutes to post before this fourth event at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fourth race. The Steph being Steph, made in special weight, three-year-old, six and a half furlongs over the main track listed fast. Double in pick three wagering. Another pick four begins here. Main track is fast. Turf listed good today in the fourth race. Scratch the seven Baxter. Seven Baxter is scratched. A reminder of the jockey for the one Brody. Gabriel Lagunas. Gabriel Lagunas, the jockey for number one Brody. Post time is seven minutes. Stone Street is pleased to sponsor the Best Turned Out Awards today at Keeneland. Representatives from Stone Street will judge the horses in the paddock prior to five selected races and present the groom responsible for the Best Turned Out Race Horse with a $300 cash award, as well as a $500 cash award for the Best Turned Out Horse for the Stone Street Lexington. In the winter circle right now, the winner of the Stone Street Best Turned Out Award for today's fourth race, Orlando Garcia, the groom for number five, Coach Campbell, presented by Thoroughbred Charities of America, which provides grants to nonprofit organizations that work toward improving the lives of thoroughbred racehorses and the people who care for them. Orlando, congratulations. There's a look at our best turned out, thanks to Stone Street. Here in race number four, Coach Campbell for T. Zach Racing. One race so far in his career. Comes out of a quickly run race, and he was involved a bit early, but they got away from him. So second time out at odds of 24 to 1. Could show some improvement, the son of Midnight Loot. The number two horse title contender, this is a well-bred colt, bred by Gary and Mary West. He's by Tappet out of the unbridled song, first damn India song. Debuted at Churchill Downs going seven-eighths of a mile and was beaten by Otto the Conqueror in late September on that card at Churchill. Otto the Conqueror later on in the season at the end of his two-year-old year would take the grade or the excuse me the featured race on closing weekend at Remington Park the springboard mile bleeding beating Glenn Gary who we saw pick up a stakes win back on opening weekend just the last weekend here at Keeneland race course so the one concern would be the lack of run last time out that was on synthetic but he's back on dirt where he appears to be better suited but he is a good looking colt by Tappet a well-bred colt for Curly Heb Ian Wilkes and Julian Le Peru but the standout to me is Red State the 10 he looks good he looks fit and ready to go. He's 5-2, to two, evening up with the number nine horse, Shadow Surge, as a majority of the money is going to these two first-time starters drawn to the outside, the 10 Red State and the nine Shadow Surge, both the well-bred Colts, high-priced purchases for their connections. We'll see how it turns out. This is race number four, and as Kurt reminded us, starts a mid-card pick four for 50 cents here at Keeneland. Good luck.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fourth race, the Steph being Steph. Start up a pick four. Moving into line, race four. Teen Idol goes into the gate. Lou's legacy comes forward along with Let's Bounce. Here's Shadow Surge. Last two moving into line. Red State will be the last one. Coming forward now. Last one going in. At the post. And they're off there. Shadow Surge quick into stride along with Red State. Red State, Shadow Surge come to the front. Right out of the gate, Teen Idol comes away running in third. Coach Campbell will go fourth. Let's bounce his fifth upon the outside. And then comes title contender, moves up in sixth in between horses. Fracture, seventh back toward the inside. Lou's legacy travels in eighth. Brody wide from ninth, moves up one position from last as they head for the far turn. Up front, Red State against the rail, and Shadow Surge is right alongside, contesting the lead 22.9 seconds, the time for the opening quarter. Teen Idol is third, and running four lengths off the lead, placed outward from the rail. Coach Campbell fourth to the inside, and then Fracture, who's fifth in between that pair, moving up fourth, and now taking third. Still four lengths off the lead. They round the far turn. Red State Shadow Surge still side by side, contesting the lead just over a quarter mile to go. Fracture changing lanes, looks toward the outside third. Still four lengths off the front pair, though. Then Coach Campbell, Lou's Legacy comes next. Seven from the front. They turn for home. Shadow Surge and Red State going at it for the lead. Fracture third upon the outside. Lou's Legacy is fourth and trying to find running room. Has to change lanes toward the outside, but the leader's moving by the eighth pole. Red State. Red State in front by five. Fracture is second. Lou's Legacy third. 16th to go. Red State in in front. Fracture then lose legacy. It is Red State in front. Fracture and then lose legacy. Red State hanging on. Red State wins at a half length. Fracture second. Lose legacy across the line in third and then Coach Campbell fourth. Well, the two first-time starters drawn to the outside broke in tandem, coming away from the starting gate, and Luis Saez took the initiative, crossed over in front of the nine, got down to the inside, and that may have won him the race early on in here. This Colt by City of Light was ready to roll. He was getting a little leg-weary late as the four was coming to him, but the four runs out of ground, and we'll have to settle for that second money. Red State, the first-time starter, gets it done here in race number four, 10-4-3-5, unofficial at Keeneland.
Heck Heenland Inquiry sign posted on the infield board for the fourth race sold all tickets. 10435 the unofficial results. At Keeneland, a steward's inquiry and also a claim of foul pending concerning the unofficial second and third place finishers. Steward's inquiry into the stretch run focuses on the unofficial runner-up number four fracture. In addition, claim of foul lodged by the jockey of the unofficial third place finisher number three lose legacy against the unofficial runner-up alleging interference in the stretch hold all tickets. This inquiry and the objection do not concern the unofficial winner, but they do focus on the unofficial second and third place finishers. Hold all tickets. On the television monitors and video boards, the split screen with the program feed to the left, the head-on view of the stretch run to the right. Again, inquiry and objection, both pending concerning the unofficial second and third place finishers. 10-4-3-5, the unofficial result. Hold all tickets. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's fourth race, the staff being staff, 10 Red State, owned by the Paradise Farms Corporation of Peter Prosha, David Stodiker, Kevin Haynes, Jana Wagner, the trainer Mike Maker, the jockey Luis Saez, Red State, a three-year-old son of City of Light, out of where read by Henny Hughes, bred in Kentucky by Sanford Robertson. The six and a half furlongs, one minute, 18.65 seconds. Inquiry and objection still pending concerning the unofficial second and third place finishers. Hold all tickets. The Staff Being Staff trophy presentation by Leslie Kibler, Thoroughbred Charities of America, presenting to the connections of number 10, Red State.
there has been a disqualification of the runner-up. For interference in the stretch, the stewards have ruled that number four fracture who finished second shall be disqualified and placed fifth for interference committed against the nine shadow surge. As a result, the due numbers are 10, 3, 5, 9. Split screen once again on the television monitors and video boards with the program feed and the head-on view of the stretch run. Again, the stewards have ruled that number four, Fracture, who finished second, shall be disqualified and placed fifth for interference to the nine, Shadow Surge. The new numbers are 10, 3, 5, 9. Results official for Keeneland's fourth race, 10-3-5-9, the official results. Keeneland's fifth race upcoming. The turf is listed good. The rail at zero feet today. Double and pick three wagering featured here. Take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race.
a big field getting ready for race number five here at Keeneland Racecourse. Less than 18 minutes to post. Race number five, a maiden special weight for three-year-old fillies. They'll be competing on the turf course, which continues to be listed as good as it was listed at the beginning of the day. And looking forward to turf racing here this afternoon at Keeneland Racecourse. Spaladay, the heavy favorite four to five right now in this field of 12 this is a filly for peter brandt and chad brown that was debuted at gulfstream park came from way off the pace to rally to finish third in her only career start absolutely the expectations are that she'll go better than she did and that was a good debut effort so building off of that debut effort as gabby mentioned this morning on today at keeneland gulfstream park is not an easy turf course or even main track to close on so she was up against it with the way that she ran that day she'll be better for it here today at keeneland Racecourse. the daughter of more than ready that peter brandt purchased for three hundred and ten thousand dollars at the september sale here at keeneland in 2022 a philly bred by stone uh, stone street thoroughbred holdings out of that wonderful race philly stakes winning philly day at the spa expectations high as they should be on spa today the number nine horse, she is a very well-bred filly as well. Ready for Cheryl for Mr. Charles Fipke, a homebred for Charles Fipke. This is a filly by More Than Ready that is a half-sister to Cheryl Spite, who ran in yesterday's grade one Maker's Mark Mile, and he won the 2022 grade one Maker's Mark Mile. He himself was a first-out winner at the age of three. She makes her three-year-old debut here today. And Roger Atfield, very good with first-time starters, 23% winners with first-time starters, and good with horses debut debuting on turf 20 percent winners with debut turf runners so a lot of reasons to think that ready for Cheryl pedigree trainer and right now eight to one a good price on her she could be ready to roll here today the number nine horse ready for Cheryl and then finally, let's move on to the number one horse pinup, Betty for trainer Mike Baker as he looks for back-to-back -back on the card with jockey Luis Saez. This is a Constitution filly who tries turf for the first time. The first dam has yet to produce a winner. I'm Betty G, daughter of Into Mischief. But this filly's been knocking on the door in her dirt and synthetic races. Two of her last three races were very productive at Churchill Downs and Aqu Aqueduct going the one-turn mile. She went six and a half furlongs, two starts back at Turfway Park in late December. This is her three-year-old debut, or three-year-old second out, I should say. She was a three-year-old runner back on the 19th of January, but going two turns for the first time may be a positive move for this filly with that route pedigree that she has being by one of the leading stallions in Constitution. Eight to one on the board right now with pin up Betty, but Spaladay, the heavy favorite at four to five, will remain that way here in race number five. You would assume maybe around even money, six to five come post time. We'll check them out, give them a good look, and and give you our thoughts on the front side as we lead up to race number five here at Keeneland.
the horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fifth race. The Rachel's Valentina, maiden special weight three-year-old fillies, a mile and a sixteenth over the turf listed good. The rail at zero feet on the turf course today. Double and pick three wagering featured here. Take out the also eligibles, 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. Post time at seven minutes. The winner of the Stone Street Best Turned Out Award for the fifth race, Daniel Ishkoy. The groom for number 12, Tempting Lady. Presented by Bluegrass Farms Charities, which provides health and human services to those who work in the central Kentucky thoroughbred industry. Daniel, congratulations. And there's a look at our best turned out, thanks to Stone Street. Tempting lady right now sitting at 13 to 1. She's a filly that tends to want to be involved in races, whether it's sprinting or going long on turf or dirt. And we'll see what she's able to navigate from this outside post position. But congratulations to the connections on the best turned out award for race number five. That is Tempting Lady. The number five horse, Scarlet Poppy. This is a Knight of Thundy, Thunder filly that was bred in Ireland that Stone Street Stables and the Coolmore Connections led by Mrs. John Magner paid nearly a million dollars for debuts here today at the age of three and we'll see how she fares going long for the first time. Typically we look at these Wesley Ward runners at debuting sprinting on the turf course when given the option but a horse that cost nearly a million dollars at Tattersall's in 2022 makes the career debut here today and they always look so well turned out in the burgundy of, and yellow of the Stone Street Stable Silks. Spotlight A, the heavy favorite at even money for Chad Brown and Peter Brandt. The one thing that struck me is really what you're seeing on the screen right now. Just how calm and classy this filly is. She walked out, just took a look around, and nothing bothered her. And obviously there's a big crowd on hand for this gorgeous Saturday afternoon at Keeneland Racecourse. But just so much class. Some of these fillies reacting to the crowd and coming out here to the front side for their warm-up. Not the case with Spalladay. She looks as though she's done this a million times as she gets set for start two of her career. I just love everything that I've seen from her, including that debut effort. Four to five is the short number that you got to take on her but if she runs to her looks and that debut effort she will be ultra tough race number five at keeneland on the turf course listed as good will get underway in less than four minutes
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fifth race, the Rachel's Valentina. Moving into line, race five. Embark moves into line. Here's Rack and Toos coming forward. Cat Symphony goes in. Now Scarlet Poppy. Wine and Waves. Tempting Lady will be the last to load. Comes forward now. Goes in. They're at the post. And they're off. There goes Sweet Lily Bet out for the lead, but Pinup Betty is right there to the inside. Scarlet Poppy and Rakatoos also are up close and Argon there, along with Tempting Lady. Now, Tempting Lady from the far outside starting spot starts to move forward, tries to clear some of the inside traffic, is still wide, heading on to the first turn because Scarlet Poppy occupies the spot at the rail, and now Tempting Lady starts to move by. Awkward move for Sweet Lily Bet around the first turn, as well as Embark near the back of the pack. But up front, Tempting Lady, as the leader gets over to the rail now, has to lead a length. Scarlet Poppy is right there, and Argon moves up to the outside from third. Pin up Betty back to the inside is in fourth. Rack and Toos is fifth. Spaladay travels in the sixth position. Cat Symphony is seventh on the outside. Wine and Waves is eighth. Break of five back to ready for Sherl toward the back of the pack in ninth at the midpoint of the back stretch. Argentini Dodd is in tenth. Sweet Lily Bet is in eleventh position. Embark is last to the twelve. Twenty-two point six four at the quarter and forty-six point four for the opening half mile. Tempting Lady is the leader, and Scarlet Poppy is second. A length separates the top two. Pin up Betty is third back toward the inside by three quarters of a length. And then Rackin Toos, who takes toward the outside and fourth, two lengths off the lead. Now Spaladay is in fifth, starting to move toward the outside, comes off the rail, still six lengths from the front. Ready for Sherl is right behind her, but has to go out toward the grandstand side. They turn for home. Scarlet Poppy, pin up Betty, move on either side of Tempting Lady. Ready for Sherl and Spaladay from the outside. Pin up Betty up the inside. Ready for Sherl, Spaladay, pin up Betty to the inside. Ready for Sherl coming forward. Has a narrow lead. Ready for Sherl and Florent Giroux now kicking clear in the closing strides. It is ready for Sherl to win it. It'll be pin up Betty second, Spaladay third, and Scarlet Poppy fourth. What a family this filly hails from. Ready for Sherl for Charles Fipke from that wonderful broodmare and stakes winning first and perfect Sherl. The half sister to the grade one winner Sherl Spite shows up on debut here today and Roger Atfield had her ready to roll as she storms home at odds of seven to one. Spaladay had every opportunity. She just flattened out involved in that runner up photo which I feel goes to the horse and clearly I think goes to the horse on the far side but they could not keep up with ready for Cheryl here today once the race was on.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's fifth race. Number nine, Ready for Sherrill, was first. Number one, Pen Up Betty, was second. Number two, Spaladay, third. Number five, Scarlet Poppy, fourth. 9125, unofficial. Moving into the winter circle for Keeneland's fifth race, the Rachel's Valentina, number nine, ready for Sherl. Owned by Charles Fipke, trained by Roger Atfield, Florent Giroux, the jockey, ready for Sherl, a three-year-old filly by more than ready, out of perfect Sherl by perfect soul, bred in Kentucky by Charles Fipke. Mile and a sixteenth over the turf listed good, one minute 43.39 seconds. In the winter circle, the Rachel's Valentina trophy presentation by Julie Kwasniewski of Bluegrass Farms Charities presenting to the connections of Ready for Sherl.
We direct your attention to the winner's circle at this time. Today, we recognize Legacy Equine Academy for the organization's work to identify promising African-American youth and other students of color in an effort to educate them regarding opportunities in the equine and agri-science industry. Joining us in the Winter Circle to present scholarships, Legacy founder and CEO Ron Mack and board chair Marshall Fields. Legacy presents scholarships to the following students. Kayla Savage, a student at Henry Clay High School. Josiah Clay, a student at Frederick Douglass High School. And Michelle Moore, a student at Bryan Station High School. Congratulations to Kayla, Josiah, and and Michelle. We look forward to supporting you as you further your education. Race 5 results official. 9125 the official results. Keeneland 6th race upcoming, double and pick three wagering. Start of the pick six, no carryover for the pick six. Main track is listed fast, the turf listed good, the rail at zero feet on the turf course. Sixth race, a mile and a sixteenth on the fast main track. Race six will finish in the short stretch of the first wire. Scratch number three, choke, CC. Scratch number three, choke, CC.
Race number six on this Saturday card. This race will begin the $1 pick six with three stakes races still to come in the final six races of this card here at Keeneland Racecourse. Very high quality group of Phillies competing in this second level allowance race. And the number two horse, Julia Shining, is the favorite as expected. I'm going to take a shot with a filly who I think can outrun her early on. That is Musical Mischief for Stoneway Farm and trainer Michael McCarthy. This is a daughter of Into Mischief that was able to win at Churchill Downs going a mile and an eighth by 11 lengths. Prior to that, she had broken her maiden against easier types and maiden special way company at Horseshoe Indianapolis, but she really has turned the corner since going two turns in her races. Her first three starts were around a one turn. She has blossomed since going two turns. She's grade one place. She did so in the grade one American Oaks at Santa Anita back on the 26th of December opening day card at Santa Anita. And then last time out, she caught a tough field in the grade three La Cunata stakes beaten by Desert Dawn, a very good filly. She set the pace that day. I've got to think that the plan will be to try to do the same thing here today in this field of six, especially with that outside draw. I feel like she can go gate to wire in here, short stretch involved in this mile and a 16th race as well, first wire finish. I think that just aids to her opportunity here this afternoon to spring the upset on the favorite, the two horse Julia Shining. She's coming off of a four month layoff for Stone Street Stables. This filly has a ton of ability. There is no question about it, Julia Shining the two. On debut here at Keeneland, she put together one of the more impressive debut efforts in October of 2022 when she looped the field and won by two and three quarter lengths and then the buzz began following that performance back in October of 2022. She won the Demoiselle going a mile and an eighth as her follow-up race in the slop, but she has not won since. She is a filly that likes to come from off the pace, and that's why I feel like Julia Shining may be a little bit vulnerable in here with the filly that I like on the outside being able to get away from her musical mischief. But if she can stay close, she does have that ability to reel them in, and at odds of four to five, we'll see how she handles this dip down in class because since her maiden win on debut in October of 2022, she's done nothing but face against stakes company and mainly graded stakes company, including a couple of grade one efforts, one here in the Ashland and in the grade one Alabama at Saratoga last summer. The number five horse, excuse me, is my second choice. Jumped the gun there on Julia Shining, getting excited about that Stone Street Philly. But sultry last for Michelle Level. Uh, she's another one I think that can have some position out in front of Julia Shining. I mean, that's going to be how they beat this Philly here today in race number six. Colby Hernandez is aboard. She's a Philly that ran well at Fairgrounds back on the 1st of January. And then I think that you look at those two turf races, they were not bad. She caught a soft turf course against Stakes Company. And then last time out, uh, she was fourth on the firm ground at Fairgrounds. But Colby Hernandez pilots for Michelle Level, who she goes to Colby plenty here at Keeneland, especially during these meetings when the big money's on the line. And Sultry Lass, I think, does have an opportunity to crack the top three and she is currently sitting at 12 to 1. But a very competitive group of stakes quality fillies will be clashing in less than 16 minutes at Keeneland. Once again, start of the pick six on this Saturday.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's sixth race, the Road to Victory. Allowance optional claiming race for a price of $80,000. Phillies and mares age four and up. Mile and a 16th over the fast main track. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Scratch number three, joke CC. Number three, joke CC scratched. Double and pick three wagering. Start of the pick six, no carryover. Main track is fast, turf listed good. Eight minutes to post. The winner of the Stone Street Best Turned Out Award for the sixth race, Reginaldo Corrales, the groom for number six, Fireline. Presented by the Racetrack Chaplaincy of America, which ministers to the needs of everyone involved in the horse racing industry. Reginaldo, congratulations. And Fireline is definitely deserving best turned out for race number six. This Judmont Philly by Arrogate, Judmont Homebred, looks gorgeous out here. The gray daughter of that champion, Arrogate, from the Quality Road First Dam. She's a two-time winner. She picked up wins late in her two-year-old season and near the beginning of her three-year-old campaign or at the beginning of her three-year-old campaign last year. And then she really started to swim in the deep end of the pool, running in grade ones, grade three. The turn back the alarm was the last time we saw this filly. She was beaten by a, a very nice filly in Interstate Daydream. So, But off the five-month layoff, that may have just been what she needed. Get a little bit of time off of that campaign last season, which encompassed five races in 2023. She is currently sitting at four to one right now this is a very good group as i mentioned before julia shining still holding at four to five the number two horse for stone street stables we're less than six minutes out from the sixth race start of the pick six at keeneland
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's sixth race, the road to victory, start of the pick six. Moving into line, race six. Magical loot goes in. Julia Shining. Little King's Princess. Sultry last, two more to load. Here's Fireline. Musical Mischief, the last one. Going in. First wire at the post. And they're off. There goes Lil King's Princess. Lil King's Princess from between horses comes out for the early lead. Then fire line up on the outside. Julia shining back toward the inside. Lil King's Princess, though, has the lead. Starts to get closer to the rail as they move into the first turn. Musical Mischief moves up just off her flank into second. Around the outside of fire line, who's third. Sultry last fourth. Julia shining a lane off the rail in fifth around the first turn. And Magical Loot is last of the six. Lil King's Princess got the opening quarter, 24 Point three seven seconds leads it by a length. Musical mischief goes second by three quarters of a length. Sultry last, third up on the outside, then fire line fourth back toward the inside. With Julia shining at fifth, five lengths off the lead. She's got magical loot right behind her, who travels in sixth as they reach the midpoint of the back stretch. Lil King's Princess dictates the terms here and leads it by two lengths. Opening half mile went in 48.65 seconds. Lil King's Princess leading Musical Mischief, who is second by three quarters of a length. Sultry last third, and then Fireline, who's back toward the inside and fourth. Still three and a half lengths off the lead. Julia Shining is another length behind her, and then Magical Loot against the rail at the back. They're midway on the far turn, and here's Musical Mischief now starting to move up to the outside of Lil King's Princess. The battle for the lead a quarter mile out. Julia Shining and Fireline are coming. Here's Julia Shining. She is swinging up to the far outside at the top of the short stretch right alongside of Musical Mischief. Julia Shining from the outside. Musical Mischief to the inside. And then Magical Loot who goes to the rail third into the final furlong. Fireline is fourth. Musical Mischief. Magical Loot up the inside. Then Julia Shining. Magical Loot. Magical Loot. And Brian Hernandez Jr. got it by a neck. Musical Mischief second, Julia Shining third, Fire Line fourth. Coming through on the inside, Brian Hernandez Jr. and Magical Loot as it was game on between Julia Shining and the number seven horse Musical Mischief, but slipping through on the inside and perhaps catching them both off guard a bit is the number one and eventual winner, winner Magical Loot, who springs an upset at odds of seven to one in race six here at Keeneland.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's sixth race, number one, Magical Loot, was first. Number seven, Musical Mischief, was second. Number two, Julia Shining, third. Number six, Fireline, fourth. One, seven, two, six, unofficial. Moving into the winner's circle for Keeneland's sixth race, the road to victory. Number one, Magical Loot, owned by Whittem Thoroughbreds, LLC of Janice Whittem, trained by Ian Wilkes, Brian Hernandez, Jr., the jockey. Magical Loot, a four-year-old son of McLean's music, a four-year-old daughter of McLean's music, I should say, out of street song by Flatter. Winner bred in Kentucky by Whittem Thoroughbreds, LLC. The mile and a 16th over the main track listed fast today, 1 minute 44.55 seconds. Trophy presentation upcoming. Sixth race, results official, 1726, the official results. In the winter circle, the trophy presentation for the road to victory, Dan Waits, racetrack chaplaincy of America, presents to the connections of magical loot. Keeneland's seventh race upcoming, 27th running of the Giants Causeway Stakes, grade three. The turf listed good, the rail at zero feet. Double and pick three wagering, start of the late pick five. Also start of the Keeneland turf pick three, made up of races seven, nine, and 11. A reminder, scratch number three, Jill Jitterbug. Again, scratch three, Jill Jitterbug. 13 high class draws into the race. 13 high class draws into the race. Brian Hernandez Jr. will be the jockey. That means there is a jockey change for the seven Port Townsend, and that'll be Florent Giroux. Number seven, Port Townsend, the jockey, Florent Giroux.
Kicking off the stakes action here at Keeneland Racecourse, it's the Grade 3 Giants Causeway coming up next. Five and a half furlongs on the turf course today. And turf listed as good as we got some rain yesterday and the day before that. So do take note of that, that the turf is listed as good, especially when you're handicapping those late pick five tickets, which does start in this upcoming seventh race. Let's take a look at the field and the 11 horses where I start things off. The 11 Elm Drive ships in from California for trainer Phil D'Amato. But this mare, she's had a couple of workouts here at Keeneland. So obviously she shipped here several weeks ago and got those workouts locally at Keeneland, which I think is helpful. But when I'm looking at this race, and I know six and a half down the hill at Santa Anita, couldn't be more different than five and a half furlong sprinting on the turf at Keeneland. But I think the profile of a horse that wants to go a little bit farther than five and a half furlongs is going to be very key in this race today. Because of the softer ground, I think some of these horses that might be more proficient at five furlongs or five and a half furlongs might struggle with getting to the finish line. Whereas the 11 Elm Drive, yes, she might be a little bit better going farther, but stamina is going to come into play. So I think she could sit a nice stalking trip under Louis Saez and hopefully um, be able to outlast some of these other turf sprinters. She also comes into their race with a lot of class. That takes us to a Philly just to her outside, the 12 Love Reigns. I kind of thought that she was a must use in this late pick five. And I don't know that she's the best Philly in this field. I actually think she has to really improve, even improve upon her best race, which was a win in the limestone two starts back. But Wesley Ward wins with these types of horses. And he wins with horses coming off these types of layoffs during the spring meet at Keeneland. I just take us back to last week when Fandom won off of the long layoff last seen at Royal Ascot. So we know that she's going to be primed and ready for her best effort. Will her best effort win against this group? We'll see. But she is 9-1, to one and that is a very tempting price, especially considering the connections here and the fact that it's a turf sprint at Keeneland. And that takes me to another horse, the favorite, the eight, Roses for Deborah. She is the deserved favorite. Six to five, even money. That does seem quite low on this horse. I do think she deserves to be the favorite. She's the most accomplished mare in this field, but this isn't a bad field. Yes, she uh, was accomplished last year winning the grade three caress at Saratoga. She came back in the smart and fancy. And I bring up those two races in particular because they were over good ground and she is going to be over good ground this afternoon. So clearly she can handle a turf with a little bit of give to it, which I think is helpful, but she is making her first start of the year. Obviously, things she didn't uh, things went a little bit uh, unfortunate last time out, and the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. She didn't have the greatest of trips. I, I, I thought that she was one of the top contenders in there. Um, she wasn't going to win the race, but I don't think she necessarily should have finished ninth. Christophe Clement uh, freshened her since that last race, and I look for a big return from her. But once again, I like her. Just you kind of have to question what price are you willing to take on her. There are some accomplished fillies and mares in this field, and this is not an easy field for the return to the races. Taking a look at the late pick five, this race I thought was a race in which you would have coverage in the first leg of the sequence, obviously loving the 11 at eight to one. And then it looks to a little bit later today in the grade one Jenny Wiley, that's where the single comes into play, and that is the six Gina Romantica. That's a look at a combination ticket between me and Scott, but play your own ticket. The late pick five does kick off here in the seventh race. We're 14 minutes out. Good luck.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's 7th race, 27th running of the Giants Causeway Stakes, Grade 3. Phillies and Mares, age 3 and up. Five and a half furlongs over the turf listed good. The rail at zero feet. Scratch number 3, Jill Jitterbug. A reminder, 13 high class draws into the race. It will be Brian Hernandez Jr. to ride. The jockey change is for the 7, Port Townsend, Floron Giroux, rides number 7. Double pick 3, start of the late pick 5, start of the Keeneland turf pick 3. Let's meet the starters for the Giants Causeway. Number 1, play the music. Owned by Glassman Racing, LLC of Kathy and Carl Glassman, trained by Mark Cassie, Jose Ortiz, the jockey. Number 2, Bling, owned by G. Watts Humphrey Jr., Victoria Oliver trains, John Velasquez rides. 3 is scratched, 4 is Ouvre. Owned by Richard Perkins, trained by Chris Block. Jareth Loveberry is up. Five BG Warrior, owned by Keith Grass, trained by Hugo Andrade. Albin Jimenez to ride. Six Secret Money, owned by Fortune Farm LLC of Richard Nikolai. Owned by Robert Hahn, Matthew Hand, trained by Brendan Walsh. Jockey Tyler Gaffleone. Seven Port Townsend, owned by the Blue Heaven Farm of Adam Korndorf and Bonnie Baskin, trained by Cherie DeVoe, jockey Florent Cheroux. Number eight, Roses for Deborah, owned by the Cheyenne Stable, LLC of Everett Dobson, owned also by John O'Meara, trained by Christoph Clement, Irad Ortiz Jr., to ride. Nine, Kissed by Fire, owned by Commonwealth Thoroughbreds, LLC of Chase Chamberlain, X-Line Border Racing, LLC of Justin Border and Ryan X-Line, Ocean Reef Racing of William Painter, owned also by Aaron Kennedy, trained by Peter Erton, Mike Smith, the jockey. Ten Breeze Easy, owned by It's All About the Girls Stable of Honest Sights, trained by Wayne Catalano, the jockey Julian Leperu. Number 11 Elm Drive, owned by the Little Red Feather Racing of Billy Koch, trained by Philip Diamato, Luis Saez, the jockey. Love Range, the 12, Stone Street Stables, LLC of Barbara Banke, Wesley Ward, Joel Rosario is up. And drawing into the race, 13, high class, owned by the Cortland Farms of Donald Adam, trained by Steve Asmussen. It is Brian Hernandez, Jr., who rides. Post time, Giants Causeway Stakes, five minutes. What a good group, good looking group of fillies and mares here as we go postward to kick off the greatest stakes action at Keeneland Racecourse. Here's a closer look at the number two, Bling. She comes in off of a freshening since December where she faced stakes company at Turfway Park. And that was actually her first start over a synthetic surface. I actually thought she ran really well in that event, all considering the circumstances. But at the end of the day, she seems to be much better. good off the freshening today too she looks sharp which i think is important having drawn this inside post position she's a filly that has a lot of speed not necessarily at sprint distances so the fact that she looks really sharp today i think is going to help her uh, let's take a look to the six secret money this filly looks great today i know she has to improve she probably has to run her best race actually her best race was going a little bit farther at six and a half furlongs in the music city that was her first graded stake score at kentucky downs but she is just dappled from head to toe she looks incredibly fit today for trainer brendan walsh as well so she's on the board right now at 12 to 1 i would consider maybe using her at a bit of a price as this race does kick off that late pick five we're four minutes out from the giants causeway a graded stakes event grade three heading out to the turf at five and a half furlongs good luck
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's seventh race. 27th running of the Giants Causeway Stakes, grade three. Start of the late pick five and start of the Keeneland Turf pick three, made up of races seven, nine, and 11. Moving into line, race seven. Ouvre and Breeze Easy going into line. PG Warrior goes in, now Elm Drive. Secret Money, Love Reigns. Here's Port Townsend. High Class will be the last to load. Last one comes forward. Goes in. They're at the post. And they're off in the Giants Causeway Stakes. High class and love reigns. Elm Drive. Now Port Townsend moves up and takes the lead. BG Warrior moves up and goes into the second position. Roses for Debra's away running in the sixth spot. Moves up one position. A lane off the rail. Play the music. Is in seventh. Bling is eighth. Ouvre toward the inside is in ninth. And then Secret Money is tenth. Breeze Easy is eleventh and kissed by fire. Last of the twelve. BG Warrior is on top. Guides the field onto the far turn. Leading Port Townsend by a length and a half, another length and a half to Elm Drive, who travels in third position, takes toward the outside now as they come for the top of the stretch. Roses for Deborah looks to the inside, is still fourth, and running six lengths off the lead, a quarter mile to go. BG Warrior has the lead, leads it by three to Port Townsend. Here's Elm Drive. Elm Drive comes on from the outside, coming after BG Warrior. Port Townsend is there. Roses for Deborah tries to get going, center of the course, still fourth. Now she's third. Roses for Deborah Love reigns. Roses for Deborah Love reigns coming after Elm Drive, Roses for Debra. I ran Ortiz Jr. to win the Giants Causeway. Love Reigns was up for second, Elm Drive third, and Secret Money was fourth. There she is at the top of the lane, sitting a couple lengths off of the pace. And it took, it looked like it took her a couple of strides once she cornered to really get her feet underneath of her. And once she did, her turn of foot was so impressive, passing all those other fillies and mares towards her insides. The 12 love range, trying to make a bit late, but she just got started a little bit too late. And the eight roses for Deborah, her class prevails in the grade three Giants Causeway. The unofficial results of Keeneland's seventh race, number eight, Roses for Deborah, finished first. Number 12, Love Reigns, was second. Number 11, 
Elm Drive, third. Number six, Secret Money, fourth. Eight, twelve, eleven, six, unofficial. Results of race seven, official, eight, twelve, eleven, six. The official results. The official winner of Keeneland's seventh race, 27th running of the Giants Causeway Stakes, grade three. Roses for Deborah, number eight. Roses for Deborah, owned by Cheyenne Stable LLC of Everett Dobson, owned also by John O'Meara. The trainer, Christophe Clement, the jockey, Irad Ortiz Jr. Roses for Deborah, five year old daughter of Liam's Map out of Essential Rose by Bernardini. The winner, bred in Pennsylvania by Blackstone Farm LLC. Keeneland September graduate Roses for Deborah gets the five and a half furlongs over the turf listed good, one minute, 2.79 seconds.
Now the trophy presentation for the Giants Causeway Stakes to the connections of number eight, Roses for Deborah. Roses for Deborah returns a winner off the long layoff. Irad, you've been aboard her several times before in the past. Given that knowledge on this filly, uh, what were you thinking with your early position? Were you happy with that? I was so happy. Uh, a couple of horses going uh, in front of me. I was able to see, save some ground, and I was able to get to the fence real quick and saving that ground on the turn and just waiting the time to go. Like the trainer told me, try to wait, keep it together as long as you can. And turn for home is still like holding her. And when I let her go, she, she was, she gave me everything she got and she showed that she's a nice filly. Yeah, t talk to me about that turn of foot, that kick that she showed coming down the lane. Cause it looked like it took her a couple of strides at the top of the stretch to get going. And then she really got going. Yeah, yeah. She take like three jumps, but when I hit her the first time, she she turned on. And then when I hit her left hand on the, passing the eight pole, she gave me another gear, so. That's a really nice when those, these kind of horses, they give you that feel. Congrats, Irat. Thank you. And here with assistant trainer for Christophe Clement, Christophe L'Oreal. And Christophe, what was the readiness for her today? What was the confidence going into the, today's performance? Well, you know, she had a break after Breeders' Cup, and she came to Kentucky to Mr. Dobson Farm. And uh, she came to Payson all winter. She was training great over there, uh, you know, a mild winter. And she was she's just a lovely mare. And... Uh, to do that, you know, for a layoff, she, it's amazing. Uh, just uh, she ran great today. Touch rusty at the 316 pole, got a bit worried, but then from the eight pole on, she cleared the, the leaders and she went going away. So that was great. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, roses for Deborah returns a winner in the Grade Three Giants Causeway. Keeneland's eighth race upcoming. This will start the late pick four, double and pick three wagering also featured here. Scratch part of entry, won a howling time. Also scratch the six, Gilcrease. Again, scratch part of entry, won a howling time and scratch the six, Gilcrease. Main track is listed fast. Race eight will finish in the short stretch of the first wire.
late pick four time here at Keeneland Racecourse. And uh, thank you. A tip of the cap to our our fans and our people bringing their wagering dollars as there were $1.4 million in that final pool in the late pick five. Let's dive back into the late pick four as well. We still have plenty of graded stakes action still ahead and a very nice allowance race coming up next. A mile and a 16th out on the dirt course. And the five hay strike is where I go for trainer, trainer Kenny McPeak. I actually thought he ran one of his better races last time out in an off the turf event at the fairgrounds. It was a smaller tight field, but I think that shows how tough of an effort it was because of his running style. Horses like this don't do well in small fields because there's virtually no pace. And this is a horse that needs pace to close into. I think he can come back in a big way. Obviously, when you look at his profile from last year, he competed in some of the best races, including the grade one toy to blue, bluegrass right here at Keeneland. He's a graded stakes place type of runner, multiple graded stakes place type of runner. The key, though, to him today will be Brian Hernandez Jr. I've seen several, on several occasions, where Brian Hernandez Jr. makes an early move on these horses that tend to close from off of the pace. And I think that is the case for this horse. He needs to be not too far off of the pace by the time they hit the quarter pole because of the distance and the configuration of this mile and a 16th effort today. The number seven classic catch is another horse that I wanted to use. And I think he'll be able to get a mid-pack trip, especially considering him being fresh off the layoff. Uh, one of his more impressive performances came in an off-the-turf event at Saratoga over the course of the summer last year where he found himself close to a slow pace. But he can also close uh, into you know modest fractions as well. This is a horse that just seems to be very versatile, and I think he can come back in a big way for trainer Todd Fletcher. And then finally, we get to the number four, Brigadier General for Dallas Stewart. His last race, he didn't really show up. But look at his record here at Keeneland. He's two for two. His last win came right here at Keeneland in the fall over that sloppy seal track where he went wire to wire. I don't know that there's a ton of pace in here. The two transect might go. The one giant game might go. But Brigadier General, especially with the presence of Tyler Gaffleone, he won't be too far off of the pace early. And I just love the fact that he has shown a local affinity right here at Keeneland. Definitely one you want to pay attention to. The four Brigadier General right now on the board at 7-2. to two. But you can see on the tote board right now, this is a very competitive field, a very evenly matched group of horses. I think even when it's all said and done, you'll still get a great price on the post-time favorite, which likely will be the outside runner here for Todd Pletcher and Classic Catch. That's just how tough this three other than allowance race is. We'll get a closer look at these horses in just a moment and report track side in a few minutes. We are 10 minutes out from the eighth race to kick off that pick four.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's eighth race, the Glen to the Good, an allowance optional claiming race for a price of $100,000, four-year-olds and up, a mile and a sixteenth over the fast main track. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Double in pick three wagering and start of the late pick four. Scratch part of entry, 1A, Howling Time, and scratch number six, Gil Crease. Main track is fast, turf listed good, post time in just three minutes. The winner of the Stone Street Best Turned Out Award for the eighth race, Monse Cruz, the groom for number one, Giant Game. Presented by New Vocations, the country's largest racehorse adoption program. Monse, congratulations. Well, I'm going to pick up where Kurt Becker left off because the one giant game is a beautiful looking son of Giants Causeway warming up on the track under Martin Garcia today. He was definitely one of the more attractive horses in this field. And that is saying something because this is a good looking group of horses. But giant game, he comes back to the main track today after trying the turf last time out at Tampa. And if you look at his back numbers, he does have a ton of back class. At one point, ran in the grade one Whitney, setting a very fast tempo in, against the likes of White Abario, who would go on to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. That just shows you the types of horses that he was running against. Multiple grade one winners, even Bright Future being one of them. I mean, the list goes on and on. Zandon, Cody's Wish, all those horses. So uh, he, he's probably not, you know, right there in terms of as good as he once was, but he does he could probably run his B game and still be effective against this group today. I just thought he really was turned out nicely today. The number five, Hay Strike. I just love to look at this horse because he's such a cool customer. He just kind of walked out here, sauntered out here. I would say a couple of horses were very much on their toes, the seven being one of them, a couple of other runners in here. But the five, Hay Strike, was just... Like I said, there's no other word. Just sauntering out to the racetrack. Wasn't phased by anything. Obviously, there was a big crowd, and he just kept his composure. So another one that was interesting here. But he is going to have to get going early. His running style works against him today. There's not a ton of pace. And obviously, with the short stretch, mile and 16th, configuration. Closers don't always have the easiest go of it, but physically he did look the picture today. It's a very good group, but the betting public landing on the number seven classic catch as their three to two favorite.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's eighth race, the Glen to the Good, start of the late pick four. Moving into line, race eight. Here's Frosted Departure. Three more to load. Brigadier General goes in, two left. Hayes Strike. A classic catch, the last one. Last one going in. First wire at the post. And they're off. There goes Frosted Departure out for the early lead. Transect is right there to the inside, and Brigadier General comes away running in the third position as they head to the first turn. The lead battle continues. Transect from the inside moves up and puts a head in front as they swing around the turn. Frosted Departure is right alongside, and now he regains the advantage. Frosted Departure moves up a lane off the rail, leads it by almost a full length. Brigadier General is going to move right behind him, moves up into the second position on the outside as Transect is now shuffled back into third, flanked by Giant game and fourth, then a gap of just over three more lengths back to Classic Catch who is next to last and Hayes Strike is the trailer opening quarter went in 23.43 seconds up the back stretch they go, Frosted Departure is the leader, Frosted Departure against the rail leads it by three quarters of a length, Brigadier General is second on the outside, a length transect against the rail, third a half length and Giant Game fourth on the outside, gap of three more lengths, Hayes Strike next to last, tucked just to the inside of Classic Catch through an opening half mile of 40 47.51 seconds. On to the far turn. Frosted Departure leads. The advantage still is three quarters of a length. And Brigadier General's right there off his flank. He's been there most of the way. Then a gap of two more lengths to Giant Game in third. They're a quarter mile out. Coming to the top of the short stretch. Transact. Then Classic Catch, who's wide. And Hay Strike is last. Here comes Brigadier General again. Coming after Frosted Departure as they move into the stretch. And Brigadier General has a narrow lead. Frosted Departure is still there, though. Toward the inside. Classic Catch out in the center of the track. And Hay Strike toward the rail. Frosted Departure is fighting back to the inside of Brigadier general frosted departure comes back and wins it and holds off a closing hay strike by a neck What a wild finish in the end. It looked like the three frosted departure was going to finish, wasn't going to win at this point as we see the number four Brigadier General absolutely pass him. This horse comes back on the inside, never giving up under jockey Julian Leperu and holding off a late challenge by the number five Hay Strike in the deep stretch. This was a game, game performance today. Kenny McPeak training your top two finishers of this race. Three, five, four across the finish line unofficially.
the unofficial results of Keeneland's eighth race. Number three, Frosted Departure finished first. Number five, Hay Strike was second. The four, Brigadier General third. And the seven, Classic Catch was fourth. Three, five, four, seven, unofficial. Into the winter circle for Keeneland's eighth race, the Glen to the Good, number three, Frosted Departure. Owned by RT Racing Stable of Ramon Talaj, trained by Kenny McPeak, the jockey Julian Leperu. Frosted Departure, a four year old son of Frosted, out of Undeterred by More Than Ready, bred in Kentucky by Alistar Thoroughbred Company, LLC. Keeneland November, horses of racing age sales graduate, Frosted Departure. Eight and a half furlongs over the main track listed fast, one minute forty four point oh nine seconds. Eighth race results official, 3547. The official results at the winter circle, the Glen to the Good trophy presentation, presented by Anna Ford of New Vocations to the connections of Frosted Departure. Keeneland's ninth race upcoming, 36th running of the Jenny Wiley Stakes, grade one. The turf is listed good, rail at zero feet. Double and pick three wagering starts the last of the day's rolling at pick threes. No scratches, no jockey changes in race nine.
It is now time for the grade one Jenny Wiley, and we take a look at the number six, Gina Romantica, as trainer Chad Brown will send out a quartet of horses in here to look to extend his very impressive rec record in the grade one Jenny Wiley. He has won five of the last six runnings of this grade one at Keeneland. An Italian won it last year. Regal Glory won it a few years ago. Rushing Fall won back-to-back editions -back of this race. And of course, Sister Charlie as well. So he definitely brings some of his best turf fillies and mares that we have seen in the barn. Gino Romantica is one of them. She is a very impressive filly. And what I love about her races last fall is it looked like she really started to get good in the latter half of her four-year-old season. She was always good. She was a very useful dirt horse, but man, did she turn things around when she transitioned her form to the turf. She would go on to win the grade one QE2 Cup right here at Keeneland, and then the grade one first lady right here at Keeneland, two starts back, uh, pulling off the defeat over in Italian that year. And like I said, she just looks like a filly that, or mare, I should say, that continued to get better in the late half of her season last year. And sometimes we see that when fillies start to improve in the second half of their season as a four-year-old, they can improve into a different stratosphere in their five-year-old season. So I'm anticipating big things from Gina Romantica this season for trainer Chad Brown, and I hope she can kick things off maintaining her undefeated record here on the Keeneland Turf Course. The number five English Rose, Charlie Appleby, sending out Master of the Seas yesterday for the grade one makers Mark Mile victory. And he's well represented with this four-year-old filly by Frankel. She is lightly raced. She is definitely not as proven as some of the other contenders in this field. But Charlie Appleby telling us this morning on Today at Keeneland, talking to our very own Tom Leach, is that she's got untapped potential is how he described this filly. And he also plans that if all goes as well today campaign her in the states throughout the summer and maybe a little bit further down the road they'll be looking at the grade one diana and her future but you know she was good from the get-go she won first time out she's lightly raced but she's really handled so many different things that have been thrown at her whether it be seven furlongs on the turf upwards of a mile and an eighth on the turf and the race in which she won last time out the group two at may dawn and that was a class test for her and she prevailed so i do think she is worth a look here uh, nine to five is low, though, on a filly that really does need to step up uh, to the plate here against legitimate grade one horses. The number nine, as we go to the outside, Didia, she is so nice. My concern with her and why I did not pick her on top is not because of her class. She, if she runs her best race today, she is as good as any other filly and mare in this race. I worry about the distance. Is she most effective at a mile and a 16th? Some of her better races have come going distances upward of a mile and a quarter. Yes, she has won at a mile and a 16th, but she hasn't gone against grade one company at a mile and a 16th. So this will be the big class test for her, but I thought she came back in very impressive fashion last time out at Gulfstream and the Pegasus World Cup Philly and Mare Turf. And she was kind of taken out of her running style that day. I thought it, that's why it was such an impressive performance for her. Usually she wants a target. She doesn't want to be that close to the pace, but considering the slow pace, she found herself in that position and she overcame it to win as the favorite at three to one. But I think she merits a lot of respect in this field today. The number eight horse, Star Fortress, is a mare that we saw break out in her U.S. debut in the grade three Cardinal over Churchill last November. She won that race by 10. Now, after that, she found herself in trouble in much deeper waters in the, Breeder in the Pegasus World Cup Philly Mare Invitational. And then in her most recent race, the pace was just simply too slow. She was aggressive early in that race, down the midway point of the race as well, because the pace was simply too slow. There should be more pace here today. She's got talent, and I think that she's got the ability here to make a serious impact in this great one, Jenny Wiley, as she steps up in competition. I'll take a shot with Star Fortress here today in the featured grade one. Scott Hazelton uh, taking a big shot. I cannot believe that this filly is 33 to one on the board right now. If she runs back to her race in the grade three Cardinal, she can be as good as some of these other fillies in here. Yes, she's had bad trips in the last two starts and maybe she can overcome that to hit the board here. She is a class filly. 33 to one is a big price on a very impressive filly for trainer Cherie DeVoe. But the focus, the conversation is all about trainer Chad Brown as he sends out four 
horses in this year's edition of the Grade 1 Jenny Wiley, hoping to get his sixth win in this very prestigious race. And the focus will be on the sixth Gina Romantica as she looks to stay undefeated here on the Keeneland Turf.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's ninth race, 36th running of the Jenny Wiley Stakes, grade one, fillies and mares age four and up. Mile and a 16th over the turf listed good, the rail at zero feet. Double and pick three wagering starts the last of the day's rolling pick threes. No scratches, no jockey changes, post time in six minutes. Let's meet the starters. Number one, Walkathon, owned by Witham Thoroughbreds LLC of Janice Witham, trained by Ian Wilkes, the jockey Julian Leperu. Two, Fluffy Socks, owned by Head of Plains Partners LLC of Saul Kuman, trained by Chad Brown, the jockey Irad Ortiz Jr. Three, Elusive Princess, owned by Ellen J. Foxwoods of Jamie Roth, Elusive LLC of Jean-Philippe Dubois, NK Racing of Nancy Favreau, Church Street Stable of Anthony Munifo, trained by Arno Delacour, Jr. Alvarado, the jockey. Number four, Embrace Me, owned by Mark Anderson, trained by Lance Rutledge, Gerardo Corrales, the jockey. Five English Rose, owned by Godolphin LLC of Muhammad Al Maktoum and others, trained by Charlie Appleby, the jockey William Buick. Six Gina Romantica, owned by Peter Brandt, trained by Chad Brown, the jockey Tyler Gaffalione. Seven Surge Capacity, owned by Clarovich Stables Incorporated of Seth Clarman, trained by Chad Brown, the jockey Joel Rosario. Eight Star Fortress, owned by John Gunther and Euro West Bloodstock Services of Tandia Gunther, trained by Cherie DeVoe, the jockey Luis Saez. Nine Didia, owned by Mary Bell Stable of Charles Noel, Resolute Racing of John Stewart, the trainer Ignacio Correas, the jockey Jose Ortiz. And number 10, Butte de Cachet, owned by Madiket Stables LLC of Saul Kuman, owned also by Michael Dobb and Louis Lazanero LLC, trained by Chad Brown, the jockey Frankie DeTore. Post time in less than five minutes. Field is warming up for the grade one Jenny Wiley coming up next. And here's a look at the number six, Gina Romantica. I picked her. I simply think that she is the mare to beat in this event. But I did want to mention that she looked like she was getting a little keyed up coming out to the main track today. She was with the pony and she just was kind of on her toes very much. So you can see she's a little sweaty around her neck as well. So I hope that she can settle and calm down. But sometimes horses get like this off of the layoff. They're, they're sharp, they're keen to go. And sometimes they can get that energy out of their system prior to post time. Sometimes they can't, but it's just something to keep uh, an eye on here as we go post word, the number six, Gina Romantica. Let's talk about two others. The one walkathon being one of them. I really love the looks of this really today. I mean, every horse that I see Ian Wilkes turn out, they always look great, but she just was very bright. She had good positive energy, healthy coat, good weight, all those things uh, to, to contribute to catching my eye today. Uh, she's a filly that also looks like she really turned a corner in the last two starts. She won the grade three Endeavor, which was not an easy field, two starts back. And then she came back with a completely different running style in the grade three Honey Fox to close from off the pace and almost win against graded stakes company at Gulfstream Park. So she might just be a mare that's getting good at the right time. She certainly looks good to my eye today at a price. And then the five English rows, she's a totally different physical than the rest of the fillies and mares in here. She is more compact. She's not as tall as some of the other fillies in here as well, but I do not mind that, especially over this good listed turf course. She kind of looks like she might be able to just skip right on top of the surface. She's not the biggest filly you've ever seen, but she is extremely athletic. Look, th look at the way that she is prancing on the track right now, really kicking her front legs in front of her. She just has an air of confidence about her today as well. 
I thought that she would really have to step up to the plate in order to win this grade one Jenny Wiley. And it looks like she's coming with her best foot forward, at least from a physical standpoint today at eight to five. This is such an interesting race. Not surprisingly, they all are. Uh, great, especially those grade ones here at Keeneland Racecourse. We'll see how this race unfolds as we are two minutes out from race nine, the grade one Jenny Wiley. Good luck. Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's ninth race, 36th running of the Jenny Wiley Stakes, grade one. Moving into line, race nine. Star Fortress going in. Elusive Princess. Didia, Embrace Me goes into the gate. Here's English Rose. Boot to Cachet will be the last one. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off in the Jenny Wiley Stakes. 
There goes Fluffy Socks from the inside. Here comes Boot to Cache from the extreme outside. English Rose moving forward down to the inside as they head for the first turn. Diddy is up close, then surge capacity, but it is Boot to Cache who's got the lead, but outward from the rail, heading into the first turn. English Rose forwardly placed along the inside. In second, Diddy goes third up on the outside. Walkathon is fourth back toward the rail. Surge capacity alongside her in fifth. Gap of two lengths to Gina Romantica, one lane off the rail around the first turn. In sixth by just a neck, Fluffy Socks is now settling down to seventh on her inside. Embrace me a wide eighth as they head up the back stretch. And then Elusive Princess, who's in ninth, Star Fortress last of the ten. It was 24.18 seconds the time for the opening quarter. Boot to Cache has made the top clear, leads it a length against the rail. Diddy a second by a head, and then English Rose third toward the inside. Surge Capacity looks toward the outside and fourth, and then Walkathon is fifth. It was 48.65 seconds for the first half mile. Gina Romantica is in sixth position between horses, has embraced me to her outside. That pair six lengths off the lead. They're midway on the final turn. Boot to Cache leads it by a length. Diddy second on the outside a length. English Rose is third. Surge Capacity. Fourth up on the outside at the top of the lane. Boot to Cache still has the lead. Didia English Rose toward the inside. Then surge capacity. Gina Romantica is still six lengths away. They're into the final for long. Boot to Cache leads it. English Rose to the inside. Didia still there. Boot to Cache in front. English Rose is still two lengths away. Boot to Cache in deep stretch here. Chased by English Rose. Boot to Cache. 25 to 1 upset under Frankie DeTore in the grade one, Jenny White. Trainer Chad Brown gets his sixth victory in the grade one, Jenny Wiley, and it is with a 25 to one shot. Boot de Cache taking the field from gate to wire. Nobody really wanted to press her early, and she reeled off modest early fractions. Nobody pressured her. We saw a late bid from the number five horse in the late stages of the race, but she could not quite catch her. Boot de Cache going gate to wire. Trainer Chad Brown, Madiket Lazanero as well, and Frankie Dottori in the irons for the grade one Jenny Wiley. The unofficial results of Keeneland's ninth race. Number 10, Boot to Cache, was first. Number 5, English Rose, was second. Number 9, Didia, third. Number 7, Surge Capacity, was fourth. 10, 5, 9, 7, the unofficial results.
results of Keeneland's ninth race official. 10597, the official results. The official winner of Keeneland's ninth race, 36th running of the Jenny Wiley Stakes Grade 1, Boot to Cachet. Owned by Madiket Stables LLC of Saul Kuman, owned also by Michael Dubb and Louis Lazanero LLC of Louis Lazanero. The trainer, Chad Brown, the jockey, Frankie DeTore. Boot to Cachet, a five-year-old mare by Literato, out of sign and seal by Hurricane Run, the winner bred in France by Gregor Vachet. One minute, 42.9 seconds. The time for the mile at a 16th over the turf listed good. Earlier today, it was good to welcome William W. Thomason, Jr., Keeneland director and former president, and now at this time on the turf course for the Jenny Wiley Trophy presentation, Keeneland trustee William M. Lear, Jr. will present to the connections of Butte de Cachet, winner of the grade one, Jenny Wiley. Boat to Cachet taking the field gate to wire in the grade one Jenny Wiley and here with winning rider Frankie Dettori. A couple of days ago you won a race at Keeneland. You didn't do the flying dismount. There are a lot of disappointed people not in the today. crowd. Not today. You stuck the landing. Congratulations. But Frankie, take us through this trip. Were you surprised that you didn't really get any pace pressure today? Uh, yes, I was. I thought the, the 9 at had speed. She won the Pegasus in front. But Chad left it to me and she broke well and uh, I was able to get to the front in my own terms. And uh, like you said, nobody passed me. And when I got to the quarter pole and let her loose, the only thing on my mind is uh, she has run for four months. Hope she had the legs to get to the line, but she never stopped. I was never in doubt. And, you know, obviously trained by a master trainer. I, uh, I uh, just did what I had to do and uh, it was pretty easy, I'll be honest with you. You've won many grade ones around the globe. How does it feel to get this grade one Jenny Wiley at Keeneland? Yeah, of course, uh, Keeneland is a very important meet. I've, I've had a couple of winners in the past, but none as big as this one. Uh, we got three weeks to the Kentucky Derby. I'm trying to sell myself to the Kentucky people for, <laughs> for the meeting coming ahead. But uh, yeah, listen, uh, beautiful day. We got a full crowd. 
We need a group one for Chad and the team. Uh, it's fantastic. Well, if you can't sell yourself, I don't know who can with your resume. Congratulations, Frankie. I'll bring you over to winning trainer and Chad Brown. Okay, well, she surprised the betting public. She was 25 to 1 today. Did she surprise you? She didn't surprise me that she was able to win. She surprised me that she went wire to wire. And uh, Frankie, le leaving the paddock, said, you know, I plan on being very forward in here. I thought about it for a minute, and I said, I'm not going to tell him <laughs> what to do. So um, such a, uh, an important win uh, to share. I've never won a grade one with, with Frankie. So um, obviously anything can happen in those magic hands of his. I want to thank the partners that weren't able to be here today. Sal Cuman and his partners, Mike Dubb and Louis Lazanero. Um, they couldn't make it, but it's a huge win for them. And my team, you know, it's our seventh, Jenny Wiley. And uh, like I said in the bluegrass, many, many of the same team members were with us for the first one. Uh, the horses may change, but the people working and making it happen haven't. So uh, it's really their win. They did all the work. Yeah, when you reflect back on your other wins in the grade one, Jenny Wiley, I mean, how special is this race to you, just considering the fillies and mares that you've brought here? Yeah, well, when I worked for Bobby Frankel, he won it four years in a row, and I could see him you know, put this on a high priority list. And, you know, he, he not only taught me to train, he, he taught me, you know, what really matters. And Keeneland was a very important meet to him, uh, starting his best turf fillies uh, early in the year. He really targeted this race during that run when I worked with him. And um, I knew that if I had good enough horses someday, I would do the same. Congratulations, Chad. Thank you. Vote to Cachet, taking the field gate to wire in the grade one, Jenny Wiley. Thank you, Gabby. Keeneland's 10th race upcoming, the 42nd running of the Stone Street Lexington Grade 3. The main track listed fast. Race 10 will finish in the short stretch of the first wire and starts the last of the day's rolling doubles. Scratch the 7, ever do it, number 7. Scratched.
Lady Aurelia down the center in the white and green colors is going away at the end. Rachel's Valentina Ratner and takes the lead. It is now time for the Grade 3 Stone Street Lexington, the final opportunity for these three-year-olds to get derby points uh, just a couple weeks out from the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. And they're going to be heading out to the main track at the distance of a mile and a 16th. And you're taking a look at the number 10 Lucky Jeremy for trainer Billy Morey. I was at Turfway Park when this horse ran last time out in the Jeff Ruby Stakes. And I remember uh, interviewing the trainer prior to the race and asking him whether or not he thought he would take to the all-weather surface. Now, he has won many titles at Turfway Park in the past, so he would know a thing or two about horses taking to that specific surface. And going into the race, he thought he would. Now, in hindsight, I don't know that it is his best surface. He still ran really well, and I think he got a lot out of it. Being involved in that pace, going a mile and an eighth, and now today cutting back to a mile and a sixteenth. The last time he was on the dirt, it was in the Grade 3 Sunland Derby, and Stronghold won that race. Uh, Stronghold would go on to win the Grade 1 Santa Anita Derby, and I know some people might think, eh, well, the California contingent might not be that strong with regard to this year's Kentucky Derby, and I would disagree. I think Stronghold is a really nice horse. I think the second place finisher in the Sunland Derby is really nice. A lot of luck. So therefore, I have confidence in Lucky Jeremy, and I have confidence that he can clear the field from that outside post position and have this forward trip on a track that is very kind to speed. And on top of that, considering the mile and a 16th, that short stretch, you definitely don't want to be too far off of the pace. The two, the wine steward for trainer Mike Maker, for what it's worth, Mike Maker does really well with horses coming off of these extended layoffs on dirt, in dirt routes. That's a positive ROI for the barn, but I still think this horse has to prove himself. Not, it's very uh, difficult for horses to come back off of these extended layoffs and win going two turns when you have all of these other three-year-olds who have seasoning and foundation underneath of them. On top of that, I know his best race was in the grade one breeders for Turdy going a mile and a 16th. But prior to that, he was actually running some really good races, sprinting, going five furlongs and six furlongs. So, you know, there's still maybe a question as to what his best distance is. So all of that combined, I can't take him on top at the price at five to two. If he was six to one or something like that, if we were talking about different odds, then I might consider but this is just kind of a short price on a horse that has a lot to prove and some things to overcome today. The five Hades chips up for Joe Orsino. He was very impressive in the grade three Holy Bull two starts back when he beat the likes of Fierceness who would come back in the grade one Florida Derby and win by a pole, specifically 13 and a half lengths. And he did not get a good trip in the Florida Derby. Was he going to win that race? Absolutely not. Nobody was going to beat Fierceness. But he didn't get a good trip. And I do think that cost him his early positioning. And after that, Paco Lopez just kind of folded up on him. This is a horse that needs to be forwardly placed. He's really the only horse, in my opinion, that can run with Lucky Jeremy. The blinkers on will make him fresh, and we'll see. He's a gritty horse. He does not like to be passed, and he has a lot of talent. He's very versatile, but I think the best case scenario is this horse goes to the lead and see what he can do. Uh, he is one of the few horses in here that will have an impact in terms of the derby points. If he wins this race, he will likely get into the Kentucky Derby. Other horses will need defections. And that is, uh, again, the five Hades here for trainer Joe Orsino, who gets the blinkers on. The number eight horse in Sino has waited a week 
Brad Cox opted not to run him in the grade one Toyota Bluegrass last Saturday because of the outside draw. Here he is in the grade three Stone Street Lexington making his dirt debut. He's got a dirt pedigree. He's a Colt by Nyquist out of a Bernardini first dam. And he was a, a winner of the John Battaglia last time out beating Epic Ride who was third in last weekend's grade one Toyota Bluegrass. Also on top of that, He's been working here at Keeneland with a horse named Tappet Shoes who ran in last year's Belmont Stakes and he's a half brother to the two time grade one winner Cyberknife. When you've got a powerhouse barn like Brad Cox does you have the luxury of working good horses with good horses and that has been the case lately with Encino. I'll take my shot with him today in this grade three Stone Street Lexington. Yeah, Scott, he's been very versatile in his career thus far. He broke his maiden at Turfway going gate to wire, and then he closed into a fast pace, but he had to get a good trip from that outside post position last time out in the Battaglia. So we'll see what he can do as he makes his dirt debut today for trainer Chad, uh, Brad Cox and Florent Giroux to do the riding. It's the 8 and Sino as riders are up for the Grade 3 Stone Street Lexington. Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's 10th race, 42nd running of the Stone Street Lexington Stakes, grade three. Three-year-olds at a mile and a 16th over the fast main track. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. It starts the last of the day's rolling double. Scratch the seven, ever do it. Number seven, scratch. Post time in less than five minutes. Parading to the post for the Stone Street Lexington, number one, Secret Chat. Owned by Gelfenstein Farm of Ivan Rodriguez, trained by Roderick Rodriguez, Joel Rosario is the jockey. Number two, the Wine Steward, owned by Paradise Farms Corporation of Peter Prosha, owned also by David Stodiker, trained by Mike Maker, the jockey Luis Saez. Number three, Dilger, owned by Mike Ryan, trained by Safi Joseph Jr., the jockey Tyler Gaffalione. 
Number four, footprint owned by Greg McDonald, trained by Kenny McPeak, the jockey, Brian Hernandez, Jr. Five, Hades, owned by DJ Stable, LLC, of Leonard Green, owned also by Robert Cotron, trained by Joe Orsino, the jockey, Jose Ortiz. Six, How's Your Attitude, owned by Welch Racing, LLC, of George Huff, trained by John Ennis, jockey is Adam Biskitza. Seven is scratched. Eight, Encino, races for Godolphin, LLC, of Mohammed Al Maktoum and others, trained by Brad Cox, jockey Florent Giroux. Nine, Liberal Arts, owned by Stephen Ferraro and Evan Ferraro, trained by Robbie Medina, Irad Ortiz Jr., is the jockey. And ten, Lucky Jeremy, owned by Jeremy Ramsland, trained by Billy Morey, Gerardo Corrales, to ride. Post time, three minutes. The winner of the Stone Street Best Turned Out Award for the Stone Street Lexington, Jose Maria Estrada, the groom for number nine, Liberal Arts. The award presented by the Jockey Club Safety Net, a charitable trust which provides financial relief and assistance to needy members of the thoroughbred industry and their families. Jose Maria Estrada, congratulations. Looking at the number nine, Liberal Arts, the best turned out horse. Um, so I was at the Arkansas Derby last time out uh, when he ran at Oaklawn Park, and I had the opportunity to speak to his trainer and Robbie Medina prior to that race, and I asked him, how was his fitness? Was he ready going into the grade three Southwest, or do you think that he had more room to grow? And he said, no, he was very fit. He was physically prepared. It's the mental aspect of this horse. Sometimes he can be an overthinker and lose his cool in the afternoon. Now, he did a little bit in the Southwest, and he definitely did in the Arkansas Derby last time out. You could see him just kind of unraveling prior to post time in that race. When he walked into the paddock, he looked fine. He looked great. And then he started to unravel a little bit. So I think the key for him is to really keep his composure today. I, he's getting a little warm, but I don't mind that. Overall, he looks good. And look, sometimes Oaklawn can be a tricky track because of that indoor uh, paddock. Then they have to go out to the turf course. There's a lot of things going on prior to the race. This is more of a, a, an easy approach to get to the starting gate. So maybe he can turn things around, but he does look good here for Robbie Medina. The number 10, Lucky Jeremy. I like this horse. <laughs> I liked him on, on paper. I like him physically. He's not going to have an easy task of clearing the field and getting the lead here, but he couldn't look any better coming into today. Just a nice shiny coat, and he looks like a happy horse for the connection. So all good to report there. And then one other horse I'll give you at a big, big price, 37 to 1 on the three, Dilger. This horse had made a nice appearance. Uh, he totally turned things around last time out. I don't know that that was a legitimate performance. And look, he is definitely bred for turf. He's by Lopa de Vega. He's out of a majestic perfection mare. There's definitely turf there. You would uh, understand why his career started off on the turf. But he popped up in a big way last time out. And physically, he's just really broad through his chest, really powerful behind the saddle. Maybe this is a horse that could do some damage at a big price. Uh, over 30 to 1 on him. But very competitive field here for the Grade 3 Stone Street Lexington. Horses are heading to post here. Good luck.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's 10th race, 42nd running of the Stone Street Lexington Stakes, Grade 3. Moving into line, race 10. Dilger moves into line. Footprint and now Encino. Liberal Arts goes in. Lucky Jeremy, the last one, coming forward. Goes in, first wire at the post. And they're off in the Stone Street Lexington Stakes. There goes Encino from the outside. Encino determined to clear the inside traffic before they get to the entrance to the first turn and will do so. Encino moves forward and now starts to work down toward the rail with the early lead. The wine steward will go second right behind the early leader as they swing around that first turn. How's your attitude? Stacks up toward the outside. Now moves forward carefully from in between horses into second. And Lucky Jeremy third was three wide around the first turn. The wine steward shuffled back into fourth. Hades is fifth on the outside. Secret chat. Sixth toward the rail. Footprint is seventh. Dilger is eighth. Liberal Arts ninth and last for the move up the back stretch. The opening quarter, 23.55 seconds. Encino, the leader. Encino leads it by three quarters of a length. How's your attitude? Second, the same margin. Here's the wine steward moving up to challenge for third, just inside of Lucky Jeremy. They're joined by Hades. Now, Hades is fifth, has to angle to the far outside, will be caught wide going on to the far turn, just over two lengths off the lead. And then further back, secret chat, Dilger, footprint, liberal arts at the back. It was 47.28 seconds, the time for the first half mile. Encino leading the wine steward. The wine steward starts to move off the rail as they come to the quarter pole, still a length off the lead, though. Secret chat goes to third, still five from the front. Dilger is fourth on his outside. Hades is still some ten lengths off the lead. Top of the short stretch. Encino, the leader, the wine steward, is right alongside. These two now going at it, moving into the final furlong. Gap of five more lengths to Dilger and then secret chat. Encino with a neck in front. The wine steward is second. Encino giving everything. Everything he's got turns back the challenge and wins the Stone Street Lexington under Florent Giroux. Encino broke awesome today and found himself in a forward position under jockey Florent Giroux and every other horse was just pretty much chasing in his wake but this horse dug in gamely as the wine steward came up on his flank tried to challenge him but he got back at him and dug in even harder to stay on for the victory in the end. Encino, your winner of the Grade 3 Stone Street Lexington home homebred for Godolphin and Brad Cox, Florent Giroux to do the riding.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's 10th race, number eight, Encino, was first. Number two, the Wine Steward was second. Number three, Dilger, third. And number one, Secret Chat, fourth. Eight, two, three, one, unofficial. Results of race 10 official. The official winner of race 10, the 42nd running of the Stone Street Lexington Stakes Grade 3, number 8, Encino. Owned by Godolphin LLC of Mohammed Al Maktoum and others, trained by Brad Cox. The winning jockey, Florent Giroux, with his second win on the card. Encino, a three year old son of Nyquist, out of Glittering Jewel by Bernardini. Two graded stakes winners on the card today from Bernardini first dams. The winner bred in Kentucky by Godolphin. Time for the mile at a 16th. Over the main track listed fast, 1 minute 43.93 seconds. Barbara Banke presents the trophy for the Stone Street Lexington to the connections of Encino. This is also a milestone victory today. We ask that you join us in congratulating Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum's Godolphin, whose win with Encino in today's Stone Street Lexington marks Godolphin's 16th graded stakes victory at Keeneland. In honor of this historic milestone, Godolphin receives a Keeneland pitcher as part of Keeneland's signature milestone trophy program. Congratulations to Godolphin.
here with winning connections in the grade three Stone Street, Lexington, and Sino gets the victory. And Flo, let's go back to the start. This horse seemed like he broke really well today. Yeah, he broke like a shot, and uh, I was expecting more speed, you know, like everyone anticipated, especially with Hades, you know, having the blinkers, and uh, lucky Jeremy on the outside, but uh, he really outbroke them, and uh, it was pretty much over after the first turn. When he took control of the race from there, you know, he just... He was cruising pretty much around there, and when he felt uh, uh, the wine stand outside of him, just give him a little extra push. I think that's probably what he needed because he was getting a little lost out there on his own, but uh, had plenty left in the tank and got out great and uh, looked like the added distance uh, shouldn't be a problem with him. Yeah, you felt like he really dug back in when the wine steward came up to his flank? Yes, definitely. Congratulations, Flo. We move on to winning trainer Brad Cox. You've, you've done well in this race in years past. Congratulations on this win today. Now, I am doing simple math in my head. It doesn't always uh, end out well, but I think he, that puts him 21st on the leaderboard with 40 points. Could we see this horse wheel back in the derby? I want to start by thanking Sheikh Mohammed for the opportunity with the horse and congratulating him. Um, ultimately, it'll be up to the, the good off and team, Dan Pride. Michael Banahan, Sheikh Mohammed, and if that's something they want to do, we'll prepare him. We'll ship him over to church in a few days regardless. And I would say it'd either be the Derby or the Preakness. Uh, you know, as you said, I think he's sitting 21st on the list right now, and some things would have to happen. But, uh, you know, we'll watch him. Hopefully he comes out of it in good shape and march forward. From his first start at Turfway, obviously he's campaigned over the winter at Turfway until now. How have you seen this horse really move forward to give you the confidence to even run in a race like this? Well, Tessa Bishop had him up at um, Turfway all winter, and she, as the winter went on, she kept raving about how well he was doing. She loved him in the Bataglia, and he, you know, it was a little bit of a question mark with if he'd like the dirt or not, but he obviously handled it today. He had a few works leading up to this here at Keeneland, showed his hand that he seemed like he liked the surface, and he, he you know, put it all together today. Congratulations, Brad. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Brad, with a lot of success in the Stone Street Lexington, add Encino to the lengthy list. Thank you, Gabby. Keeneland's 11th and final race upcoming. No carryover for the Toyota Super High Five. Turf listed good. Rail at zero feet. Scratch the two Copper Missile. Also scratch the 14 Thomas Aquinas, the 15 One Red Cent, and the 16 Tafari. A reminder, number 13 breakout draws into the race. The jockey will be Jose Ortiz as programmed.
Field is getting saddled for the 11th and final race here on a wonderful Saturday at Keeneland Race Course. This race going out to the turf course at a mile and a 16th, and you're taking a close look at the number five Royal Majesty for trainer Bill Mott, a son of Frankel out of the Mare Crown Queen. She actually won the QE2 as well, so she was a grade one winner. This is a really nice pedigree. Now, when you look at this horse's race last time out, I thought he was up against it from several standpoints. I mean, he really had to overcome a lot to break his maiden down there at Gulfstream. But he came back in the Colonel Liam. It was a very slow pace. You can see the opening quarter fractions, 25 and 2, going the mile. That's crawling. And I just don't think this horse had any opportunity to make up that ground considering the dynamics of the race. But he obviously overcame, uh, you know, a, a trip, two starts back to break his maiden. And I think this horse has a lot of talent in class today. He's going to be the top pick, the one pure poetry is my second selection for the same team that just uh, teamed up to win the Grade 3 Stone Street Lexington, Godolphin Homebred, sent out by Brad Cox, Florent Giroux aboard as well. And this horse showed really useful speed last time out, taking the field gate to wire. I think he's learned a lot since the summer at Ellis. Looks like he's a, a horse that really took a step forward, has matured. Everything really went well for him last time out. I expect him to hit the ground running from the rail today. And finally, we get to the number eight, St. Armand's Key for trainer Joe Sharp. This is not a slow horse. He comes out of a race last time out where they went pretty quickly in front of him going the mile and a 16th. He was in the thick of it early, and that was his first race since the fall of last year. So I think he definitely got something out of it, tired a little bit late, but maybe he comes back a stronger, fitter racehorse today, and he looks to have a forward trip under Tyler Gaffleone. He's sitting on the board, big odds right now, at 18 to 1. We'll get a closer look at these horses and report trackside in just a few moments, 11 minutes away from the 11th and final race. Good luck.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's 11th and final race, the Catch the Moon, an allowance for three-year-olds at a mile and a 16th over the turf-listed good rail at zero feet. No carryover for the Toyota Super High 5. Scratch the two Copper Missile. Also scratch the 14 Thomas Aquinas, the 15 One Red Scent, and the 16 Tafari. A reminder, number 13, breakout draws into the race. Jose Ortiz will ride as programmed. Post time, less than five minutes. The winner of the Stone Street Best Turned Out Award for the 11th race is Salvador Rodriguez, the groom for number nine, Moonlight, presented by the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund, which assists jockeys who are permanently disabled from an on-track accident and builds awareness for their needs. Salvador, congratulations. We'll talk more about these horses who are warming up on the track here. And we'll start off with the number nine, Moonlight, for trainer Todd Pletcher. And I really liked the appearance of this horse today, especially getting back to the turf course. He just has that suspension and that stride that would suggest he likes the turf course. And also we have experience on the turf course with this horse. He actually debuted there at Saratoga, going the mile and a 16th last summer. That was a really good race. I went back and watched the replay, and I just loved how he floated over the turf course. Had really nice action on that surface. So I'm happy to see him come back to the surface, but you can understand why they took their shot with him on the dirt. He doesn't have a pedigree that would scream turf. He's by Audible. That's definitely not one of the better surfaces that Audible's progeny is on. So he definitely has an interesting dirt pedigree, and he ran well. He ran well in the grade th three street sense at Churchill downs and they took their shot with him on the dirt and on the triple crown I mean the road to the Kentucky Derby he just didn't pan out on the surface so this horse is going to be tough coming back to the turf today in that debut that I mentioned at Saratoga he lost to an eventual grade one winner on the turf Carson's run actually won the grade one summer up at Woodbine the number 10 beyond stoked is another horse I wanted to mention I just thought he looked great in the coat I mean, Brian Lynch's horses always look really well turned out, but this horse looked particularly 
particularly good today. He's going to have to step up, but I thought it was a really encouraging effort to win from post 12 of 12 when he broke his maiden down at Gulfstream. He faced winners for the first time. He kind of chased a fast pace and then got tired. But maybe all those performances will set him up for his best performance yet. And he just looks like a horse that is doing very well today. And then finally, the number four deadpan, deadpan comes into the race fresh and listed as a gelding today so he's been gelded since his last start and I just liked his demeanor he looked like a bright horse um, just healthy in the coat as well I loved all of the cues that he was showing me today he will have to move forward in order to you know be a factor here and obviously his performance at um, in the kitten's joy was very disappointing but I do think that he's a horse that maybe can turn it around coming in fresh for trainer Mark Cassie this is a very competitive field of really interesting group of three-year-olds but the five royal majesty is your current favorite as five at five to two as horses go postward for the nightcap Your attention, please. A late scratch. Scratch number 13, breakout. Late scratch in Keeneland's 11th and final race. Scratch number 13, breakout. Windows remain open.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's 11th and final race, the Catch the Moon. Moving into line, race 11. Royal Majesty goes in, also beyond stoked. Gorilla Trek moves into line, and now frontline warrior. Carl with a gnarl will be the last one to load. Comes forward now, moves in at the post. And they're off. There's Pure Poetry from the inside. Pure Poetry comes right out for the lead. Incinerator comes away in second. St. Armand's Key now comes forward. Moves up in second, just off the leader's flank. Incinerator drops back into the third position. Beyond Stoked is fourth up on the outside. Moonlight fifth back toward the rail, entering the first turn. Royal Majesty in tight toward the rail. In sixth, Gorilla Trek is seventh. Frontline Warrior three wide. Moves up a couple of positions from eighth toward the center of the pack. And then further back, deadpan against the rail is in ninth. Massif is in tenth, and Carl with a gnarl, last of the 11. They head off the first turn and up the back stretch. St. Armand's Key from the outside has the lead to neck. Pure Poetry second against the rail. 22.82 seconds was the time for the opening quarter. Beyond Stoked travels along in third. Incinerator is fourth a half length. Joined there by Moonlight, fifth up on the outside. Royal Majesty against the rail in sixth position, heading on to the far turn. Frontline Warrior, Gorilla Trek. Then Massif on the outside, deadpan next to last, and Carl with a gnarl is last. 47.55 seconds was the time for the first half mile. Pure Poetry, St. Armand's Key, 1-2. Pure Poetry against the rail, ahead in front. St. Armand's Key draws alongside once again. Beyond Stoked is in third position. Royal Majesty tries to thread the needle through some traffic, comes off the rail. Fourth, Moonlight is in fifth. Massif is a wide sixth. Royal Majesty still five lengths from the lead. St. Armand's Key battling with Pure Poetry. Beyond Stoked is there and Royal Majesty up from the outside. Massif is still four lengths away. Deep stretch Royal Majesty coming forward on the outside to challenge St. Armand's Key and beyond Stokes. Royal Majesty with the lead. Royal Majesty Junior Alvarado to win it. Multiple horse photo to separate the rest of that super high five. Royal Majesty lightly raced but full of talent today. We can see Junior Alvarado at this point just angling out to about the three or four path and asking for more from the five Royal Majesty. And he just blew around the other horses that were to his inside, the 10 and the 8. They start to fade. It's going to make it a very close finish for second, but no doubt about the winner, the five Royal Majesty taking the 11th and final.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's 11th and final race, number five, Royal Majesty, finished first. Number nine, Moonlight, was second. Number seven, Massif, was third. Number eight, St. Armand's Key, was fourth. Number 10, Beyond Stoked, was fifth. Five, nine, seven, eight, ten, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland's 11th race, number five, Royal Majesty. Owned by Bessie Lou Stables of Ben Leon Jr., trained by Bill Mott, the jockey junior, Alvarado. Royal Majesty, a three year old son of Frankel, out of Crown Queen by Smart Strike, bred in Great Britain by Bessie Lou Stables, LLC. Mile and a 16th over the turf listed good, 1 minute 43.57 seconds. Results of race 11, official. Five nine seven eight ten. The official results. In the winner's circle, the trophy presentation for the Catch the Moon, Sandy Holly, representing the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund, presents the trophy to the connections of Royal Majesty. Pick six pays on six of six with a consolation five of six. Late pick five, five of five with a consolation four of five. There will be a carryover for the Toyota Super High Five, $9,926 to carry over when live racing resumes tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. The second floor grandstand, including the sports bar and the mezzanine bar, remain open for another 30 minutes. You may advance wager any races occurring after that time. For now, on behalf of Keeneland, thank you and good evening.